Oh, we're live now, Chair. Yeah, okay. Thanks very much, Lynn. Is now joining. If I could have everybody's attention, there is a lot of background noise. Can you all check that your microphones are muted, please. Plus, also, if anyone is trying to watch the live feed as well as speak, you will destroy the microphones because you get dreadful feedback. So anyone that is intending to speak, please don't try and do it because it won't work. Thank you very much. So my name's Graham War. I'm the chairman of uh, this this committee, and I'm the representative for Fall Ridge. Uh, welcome to everybody uh, for this fourth of March meeting. Uh, do I have any apologies, please, councillors? I don't know whether Neil Butterworth has got on. He was struggling. I don't know whether you can help him. We are coming to trying to help him get on at the moment. Okay, thank you. I also have had constant, uh, contact from uh, Councillor Nixon, who said he was running a bit late, but he has uh, broadband problems as well because BT have not been to his house and done the necessary yet. So... You might have him phoning in. I'm not sure. So that that's possible. Any declarations of interest? Chair, Mr. Chairman, I'm here. Thanks for Nixon. I've managed to. Oh, thank you, John. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I just explained your problem. So. <laughs> so here we are then. Declarations of interest. Now, the usual applies. I'll wait a certain length of time and then move on. Please shout if I've overlooked you and you wish to speak uh, or vote or, or whatever it is. That's fine. Public question time. We did have one question, but it is covered elsewhere in the agenda, so we'll pick that up there. Uh, minutes of the last meeting. Could somebody second those, please? Approve them. I'll second those, Chair. Thank you. Somebody proposed it for me. Jonathan? Yeah. I'll propose it. Thank you very much. I'll assume everyone is in favour unless I hear to the contrary. OK, moving on. Progress report. Does anybody have any queries or questions? I see no hands up. OK, community safety uh, issues, police matters. We have had apologies from the police. They will not be attending this meeting. So if you have anything burning that you wish to share with the committee, please do. No, we are doing very well. OK, I have over 21 speakers tonight, which is a, an awful large number for this form of communication. It would be a challenge on a normal night in the town hall. So I will ask everybody, I will ask everybody to be brief. Brief me about two minutes. Could everybody check their microphone, please? Somebody is breaking. breaking. Okay, I'll try again. So I will ask the people that wish to speak to keep it brief. Please do not repeat what's been said before. If it's in the report, please just say I agree with the report. If we have to listen to everybody repeat the same thing, we will not get through the agenda and then that's not fair to anybody because this is work that has to be done. So I would ask for your cooperation on that. That would be appreciated. So first off, I have 0917 Spring Garden Mill. I have one speaker, Carolyn Palmer. Are you there, Carolyn Palmer? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so you have the right to speak and I will let you speak, but I am going to propose from the chair that this is deferred. Are you happy to wait while I do that? And if so, speak another time when it comes back. Or do you wish to speak now? Well, it's just a, it's just a short thing I want to say. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying the old engine house at Spring Gardens Mill 
is there a significant historic architectural and heritage significance? In neighbouring towns such as Skipton or Hebden Bridge, I believe they'd be doing their utmost to try and preserve it and, and value it. And I'm disappointed to see that it's likely to be bulldozed and demolished. Okay, thank you very much. So just to reiterate what I say, I'm going to propose from the chair that this is deferred because there's still a lot of information that has not been provide, provided. So if someone would like to second my proposal. Happy to do it. Thank you. So that's a proposal and a second for deferral. I will assume all in favour. I will wait to hear to the contrary. Okay, that is passed then. We will defer that for another day. Um, it, I think it could be known from the committee that we're not that impressed, or I'm certainly not, uh, with the applicants who don't seem to be able to get their act together. Um, this is the fourth month we've had this, or certainly the third. I, I think that's just a waste of everybody's time, But um, I, I, and somebody might mention that to them. Thank you. So next up is 485. I have uh, several speakers for this. Uh, the first one is Michael Halstead. Mr. Halstead? Chairman, it's, it's oh. Michelle Halstead. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies, Michelle Halstead. Quite all right. Please, you have, you have the floor. I'll try and be as brief as I can. Uh, yes, I do agree with the report. I just want to add... Um, something to the drainage and flooding to the rear of the cottages on the proposed development. Um, now all the trees have been cut down from the development site uh, and the gardens that were at the rear of the cottages removed, there's been an increase in flooding to the cellars of the cottages that border this development. Northwest Water have been out on at least three occasions um, and they haven't found where the water's coming from, which means that this is still an ongoing issue uh, for myself and other residents on this row. So our major concern is that once heavy machinery um, comes onto this land, land sports being moved around, there's a, a grave concern that this flooding is going to increase further than what it already is. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Marian Day. Hello. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to be able to speak. I've never done this before, so I hope you appreciate the importance of what I have to say. The boundary wall, which affects one to six Keithley Road. Who will be responsible for the upkeep and the maintenance of Mr K's boundary wall? The stone wall erected more or less on top of already in part unstable and bulging 100-year-old wall from collapsing into our backyard. It is a real, real possibility and is essential it should be made clear who maintains and repairs the said wall? Mr. K or a future private maintenance and management company. Contact details are a must. The diggers may cause land movement, which will affect the wall. This should be made clear in the planning conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for being so brief and succinct and to the point. Thank you. Steve Humbert. Mr. Humbert. Oh, hello, can you yes. hear me? Yes, I can. Good evening. You have the floor. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, those of us who live in the properties adjoining the chapel land are glad to see the recommendation made by the planning department. Um, as others are speaking this evening, um, regarding the application. I only have one basic point to make. We appreciate the changes the developer has made to his proposal during the application process, 
That is the resiting of the parking bays immediately behind the cottages and the inclusion of a planted area between the cottages and the access road. Although um, I notice that Mr Kay has submitted new plans today which still grossly misrepresent or, or maximise the gap between the rear of our cottages and the boundary wall. It's still very misleading. Um, <clears throat> However, the plans show the planted strip um, with a number of viburnums, which can grow to height and spread of four metres or 13 feet. And directly behind our cottage, uh, replacing the car parking space, plan shows a common hornbeam. They can grow up to 40 feet high, 30 feet, feet wide. Given the relative height differences of the cottages and the chapel land, this planning would cause issues both with the retaining wall um, and the amount of light received by all the co cottages. <clears throat> Given the aggressive and uncompromising attitude that we've experienced so far, um, he used the possibility of erecting boundary fences as a threat. Um, <clears throat> I, I, some of you may have seen the photograph that I submitted um, to the comments of um, him operating a digger literally three feet from our back window. Um, and it has, I believe, damaged the retaining wall that's there. Um, no doubt if the wall fell down, the develop developer would deny any responsibility. Um, what I would ask that the Planning Department Committee to be extra vigilant uh, if and when a more suitable pr proposal is made for the land um, before planning permission is given, there need to be careful attention to the long-term impact of the site for the current residents in terms of lighting, drainage, planting and general amenities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Humbert. I will ask at the end of, uh, of the presentation or, or the questioning for the planning officer to comment on your concerns about the boundary fences, because the planning system does allow us in original planning permission mm -hmm. to take away some rights on the site if we need to. So I will ask the planning manager to comment on that later on. If you're Thank jo you. Jo Joanne Jones. Chairman, I think it's Joan Jones. Don't I'm not doing very well tonight, am I? <laughs> But I don't know whether she's here or not. Jo Joan Jones, I, I will call you again at the end if you've not come back soon. No? Okay, we'll try this one. Les Mort. Is it Mr Mort? No? Last call then, either Joanne Jones is now joining. Les Mort, no, not there. Okay then, um, I, I will ask uh, Mr Watson to comment on the concerns about the boundary fencing and perhaps explain to people what we could do about that if we had to. You there, Mr Watson? Uh, yes, Chairman. Chairman, I think there were... Two comments, really. One was responsibility for the wall. I think that uh, Marion Day, I think she mentioned that. And Mr Humbert was about the planting scheme uh, and how that would affect uh, boundary treatments. Chairman, one answer that you, you uh, uh, the speakers will like, one that they possibly won't. In terms of planting, yes, we, we, we need to assess the impacts of that planting on on the infrastructure and, and on the joining land uses. And uh, we obviously think that the scheme is too crammed and has a poor relationship with adjoining properties. So uh, uh, all that will come out, uh, whether they, the applicant wishes to appeal this or not. But uh, I'm quite uh, confident that we've got a, a, a sound case. You can never guarantee winning appeals, but we, we certainly won't get uh, costs on the here because uh, it is not a good layout. Chairman, in terms of the boundary wall, um, the planning system, it's not an answer people will like, specifically does not get involved in responsibilities 
it won't and uh, that's that's for land tribunals and i know people have um uh, uh, engaged uh, legal representatives on this and that's unfortunately the way that it goes but there is the uh, as i recall the law of property act 1925 as i believe uh, which guarantees the stability of land so that's how stability is dealt with and if somebody comes along and affects your property then I'm afraid it's civil redress but the planning system is specifically not involved in that uh, because uh, it just gets us involved in litigation so there are other avenues for that so Chairman, I think one helpful answer and one probably unhelpful answer for people. Okay thanks just one other thing for clarity uh, Mr Watson I see it, it's quite a controversial application this for the residents of Labour. Very surprised to see the parish councils not responded because they were a statutory responder. So that hasn't been omitted from this report in any way. Chairman, I haven't seen, unless it's come in in the last hour or so, no, I haven't seen a response come in. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Um, so, councillors, we have the recommendation to refuse. I open it to the floor. Chairman, may I just um, let you know that I'm in the meeting, Neil Butterworth. Yeah, thank you, Neil. I've got Councillor Coburn Price with a hand up. Just to say that I concur with Neil, I'm happy to propose refusal. Margaret and I went on a site visit before Christmas and the, the site is just too cramped and the officers report, especially with regard to how alien this would be as a development landscaping wise and layout wise within a village is exactly bob on in my opinion um i won't venture on how many houses i think should go on the site no that, that's absolutely fine do we have a seconder or anybody else who wishes to speak councillor foxley i have <clears throat> excuse me Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I'm happy to second that. Um, I think it's it's um, uh, way over um, over developed um, proposal um, and would have a serious impact on amenity overlooking. You know, it's it's just the wrong approach entirely. So I look forward to seeing something much better come back. Um, and if it doesn't, then uh, I suspect we'll be sat here doing the same again. Okay, but I'm happy to second that. And you are, you're proposing the report as written? Exactly. As written, yes. In the officer's thing. Okay, yes. anybody else wish to speak or are you happy for me to put that to a vote? Okay, so we have a proposer and a seconder. Unless I hear to the contrary... I will assume that everybody is in favour of refusal. I've heard nothing to the contrary, so that is refused. Thank you very much. Uh, the next one up is 0493, erection of two three-bedroom dwellings at Oakfield, Skipton Old Road. Um, I have Laura Hopkinson. Yeah, just think. Yeah, that's me. Yes, good evening. You have the floor. Hiya. Hiya. Hello. Um, so this is an introduction to the objections for planning application 200493. Um, the number and content of re objections to this application submitted by the neighbourhood clearly demonstrates the significant and widely held concerns about the proposals. This application is full of inaccuracies, duplicious and disingenuous information, which render the documents on which to base an objective judgment for this application unsafe. Even the supposedly professional produced documents include some elements which are total fabrication. We did really hope that it was possible for a committee visit to view the site and propose access route to scrutinise properly the content of the application, appreciate the local infrastructure, understand the access challenges associated with developing this site and comprehend why this proposal is so vigorously opposed by the local residents. 
We would particularly like to draw your attention to the current appearance of the land. In the design and access statement, there is a picture of the land covered with shrubs and trees. It's been systematically cleared and now resembles a barren wasteland. Even the 200 plus year old stone trough has now been removed. Rabbits, squirrels, stoats and hedgehogs, once frequent wildlife visitors, have not been seen for quite some time. We cannot understand how this application has happened in a rural conservation area before planning permission has been issued. There have been various amendments to the application over the months, with several deferrals from the Cone area meetings and amended plans submitted, but these amendments have not addressed the major issues or concerns. The plans need a, whole, a wholesale overhaul rather than tinkering around the edges to ensure that the value and standards of the conservation area are not eroded by poor and appropriate development. Surely, particularly in a conservation area, the aspiration should be for all the elements of a proposal to be of the highest possible standard and appropriate for the location. It should be site-specific, compassionate and considerate plan for such a highly visible part of this heritage area. This proposal contains one major compromise after another and fails to deliver on all fronts. My fellow speakers this evening will highlight the main areas of concern expressed by the neighbourhood and why they are urging the application with this access is rejected. Thank you. Hello, yeah, I'm here. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Hello. Welcome. Sorry, I can't turn me on. Oh, yeah, okay. I want to object to this planning application on the grounds of conservation and ecology. As long ago as 1951, when a preservation order was placed on the highest Stanroyd area of Cone, it has been recognised for its special architectural and historic interest, which should be preserved or enhanced. Several properties in this small area feature on the current draft list of non-designated heritage assets of Cone, as part of the proposed Cone Neighbourhood Plan. The Conservation Officer comments on the plot, stating that Skipton Hall Road is a highly distinctive character and because existing vegetation has been cleared from the site, any development would be more publicly visible from the road. The development would also be highly visible from the public footpath to the south and longer distances such as Winewall, Carry Lane and Troden. The present design of identikit semis in an elevated dominating position over Skipton Old Road would certainly not preserve or enhance the character and appearance of the conservation area in any way. There were two local heritage structures near the site, one a stone cattle drinking trough which has recently been removed. It had been sited there for over 200 years. The second is the farm track, the proposed access which is a traditional design with side and central grass verges. This track has constantly been compromised and damaged by heavy and increased vehicle activity as the site has been cleared and decimated. We fear said track is destined to the same fate as the stone trough. It is or was assets like these which make the area unique and special. On to the ecological survey, which was carried out in October 2019. As well as being outdated, the land has markedly changed since then. The time of year was not appropriate to fully understand the biodiversity of the site, which I repeat, has been decimated. The Environment Officer notes no arboricultural method statement or tree protection plan has been submitted. At present, a mature horse chestnut tree with its protected root area remains. It is still growing. It will continue to spread as it ages. It is unlikely 
even with protective conditions, that this tree will survive whilst being subjected to the trauma of living on a construction site. If this proposal is allowed to go ahead, we fear for the tree future, just like the track. The actions and decisions of our generation is the heritage legacy we bequest to the generations of Combe residents to come. Let's not fail them. This proposal is fundamentally flawed on the grounds of harms to the standards of the conservation area, and we urge the application is rejected. What is the point in having a conservation area at all? Thank you. So I next up, I have Helen Craig, please. <clears throat> Ellen Clegg, floor's yours. You need to unmute. Oh, nice. Right. There we are. It's all yours, Helen. Is it all mine? Yep. Thank you. Good. General access. The main important points are the original LCC Highways report on this application was of strong opposition on all fronts. This opposition has been diluted, although in reality, none of the original points on safety have changed. The transport documents submitted by the applicant are full of inaccuracies, are misleading and recommend some unsafe hazardous practices. Bent's Bent Lane is single vehicle width at both ends, with a school at one end, a narrow 90 degree bend in the middle, and a junction with no intervisibility with Skipton Old Road at the other end. Vehicles turning into bends regularly have to reverse back onto Skipton Old Road when meeting oncoming traffic. Bents is effectively single vehicle width due to parked cars, and the residual road is very narrow, despite residents <laughs> parking on the pavement. There are no places. Cars coming up, sorry, the proposed access is via a rough, lit, unmade single vehicle with track from the bent, bent lane. There are no places. Cars coming up from bent lane have to reverse back towards the 19 degree bent if meeting a car coming from bent or the unmade track. The pinch point between two balls on the track is 2.6 metres. The tracks are all designated at public footpaths, heavily utilised by walkers from the Fidget Triangle and children going to and from Christchurch School. A pinch point on the track at the entrance to the proposed site makes it impossible for a HGV to enter the site without trespassing on Dobridge Line. Eight properties are already utilised the track to access their homes and their parking provision. The track network has mixed ownership and this has not been taken into account by LCC. The two proposed properties have no of access from the main highway other than the track, so the all vehicles, visiting social, commercial, emergency vehicles, pedestrians and delivery vans would have to access via this route. The information used by the applicant of a planning report from 1992 is irrelevant to apply to today's situation. Today's level of car ownership, online shopping progress and lifestyle changes have increased traffic intensity to a level unimaginable in 1992. Expert opinion is that online shopping is predicted to continue to rise even after COVID restrictions lift. Why not simply make the access by the Oakfield Zone Drive, direct to Skipfield Road? General consensus is that this is an available and far more preferable option endorsed by highways and planning. The proposed access in this application is inappropriate and unsuitable for the local infrastructure. I urge to refuse specifically on the grounds of access. Thank you. Thank you. If I could ask future speakers to be a little bit briefer than that, I would appreciate it with the number of people that we have to accommodate. 
Um, I have uh, Malcolm Rockford. Rochford. Yeah. Right, yeah. Good evening, Mr. Rochford. Welcome. You have the floor. Okay. Uh, construction, construction access. LCC Highways, in their report, and various correspondence exchanges with the applicant shown on the planning portal have maintained major concerns with regard to construction vehicles utilising fence lane and the narrow track. The applicant arranged for 32 ton wagons to repeatedly access the site via the track last summer to deliver and remove materials. These manoeuvres gave literally single digit inches to spare between oversized trucks, buildings and walls. They also resulted in damage to a metal drain cover. When strain on the private property, a large stone drain cover was smashed. The wagons also destroyed the grass verges at the narrowest part of the trap, damaged the field drain, and this portion of the trap has remained wet ever since. A suggestion by the applicant that building materials could be transferred to a smaller vehicle to access the site by the trap would result in a high volume HDV, minimum 7.5 tons, which would destroy the integrity of the trap. The logistics for unloading roof trusses and timber frame panels, hardcore and concrete portal foundations, does not put itself to access the trap and cause disruption if accessing the road side of the site. Recently, heritage stone cattle trough was excavated out and removed from the triangle. This work involved one plant vehicle, a trailer, truck, and several additional cars, all accessing the area by the trap just on the one day. The damage inflicted on the trap is further destruction of grass verges, which risk undermining adjacent walls, is clear for all to see. It provides overwhelming evidence that the composition of the trap, not just robust enough to withstand any additional tra traffic intensity. The main soil drains from high bank barn, 2021 20, and 22 defence, run across the track to the main sewer line, gable of 15 bends. The track construction, being of crushed stone and soil, would offer little resistance to repeated heavy force of construction vehicles, resulting in potential damage to the drain. The question has also been raised by the residents as to whether any further liability with regard to the restoration of the track has been documented. The increased activity and heavy vehicles utilising the track over the past 12 months has left it in a poor state, making it difficult to negotiate for a standard car. I urge the application is refused, particularly on grounds of access. Thank you very much. And next up, I have Sharon Dale. Yes. Good evening. Welcome. You have the floor. Thank you. Thanks for taking time to uh, listen to us, and I'll be as quick as I can. Um, I'm speaking on design. So planning law dictates that councils have a legal duty to preserve the integrity of conservation areas. The design of these properties will compromise that. In a conservation area, the design should be site specific and should involve a conservation architect. These proposed semis do not fulfil that brief. The design integrity of these semis is shockingly poor. Um, they look like anywhere houses helicoptered in from a modern housing estate and have no architectural merit. Planning law also states that a much higher standard of design is expected, and that doesn't apply to these properties. Um, it also um, includes sustainability and eco and energy sources, which these semis do not have. Um, they don't conform to the local vernacular, um, and they do sit next to a historic property. Um, they won't complement or enhance the conservation area, which is what they should seek to do. The site is very prominent and six, um, it's six metres above Skipton Old Road. And the council's own assessment is that the overall impact will be, um, uh, you know, domination, really, that the buildings will dominate. Um, 
and they are, they are highly visible. Um, the council's local plan actually says that all new development should seek to deliver the highest possible standards of design, inform and sustainability, and be designed to meet future demands while enhancing and conserving our heritage assets. Again, these semis fail on that account. And I'm really concerned that the site plan submitted and the computer generated image, um, they just don't marry up. So the drawing shows trees, but they don't screen the houses. And the trees are silver birch, which take between 12 and 20 years to grow to four metres high. Um, and also, it's obvious that the tree roots would cause problems to the properties and block light when fully grown. So um, there would be worries about them being chopped down if they ever did get to any kind of height. Um, if, I'd just like to say that if the design was sensitive and showed an exceptional response to the setting, we might all feel a little bit differently, but the proposal is bog standard at best. And it's not designed with a conservation area in mind, but to cost as little as possible to maximise profit. And that really just is not good enough for one of Colne's most beautiful conservation areas, which is really well used by walkers, especially in this latest lockdown. Planning laws concur with that. Um, if the council allow these houses to be built in a conservation area, it does set a really dangerous precedent because there are two similar plots of land, of garden, further down Skipton Old Road in the conservation area. Um, and it would be impossible to refuse planning on those green spaces if this goes ahead, if these semis are built. Um, I think I'm, I've shown that there is every reason to turn down this application on grounds of design. And previous applications have been turned down. Thank you. Thank you very much. Myra is now exiting. Michael Holhouse. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Holhouse. You have the floor. Um, I wish to strongly object to raise awareness of water infrastructure at the site before making a residence closing statement. Um, there's a large disused water well and valve chamber existing on the site and United Utilities raised concerns regarding this, highlighting the danger of buildings above collapsing into the underground chamber void. Secondly, there's a live pressurised distribution water main crossing under where the houses are shown, yet the proposed main diversion runs straight through where the water well is sited. United Utilities have strongly objected and stressed their objection had to be resolved prior to determination. I just urge the committee to insist on approved engineering solutions being provided before any development could be safely permitted here. The wells position also results in the poor offset and cramped plans. And I question why something so significant isn't described in the officer's report. In closing, and on behalf of us all, many of us feel very strongly about protecting what is a valued conservation area in this historic part of Cone, and that it shouldn't be damaged by allowing My a substandard Rachel development in such a joining. prominent and elevated position. We feel this proposal is badly flawed, in particular on grounds of highway safety, accessing via the narrow track and public footpath, mostly owned by other people. This is going to lead to a long-term intensified use of the tracks, narrow bents and bent lane, and there already very hazardous single carriageway junctions in this area, of which many of you may well be familiar. These roads and junctions are going to come under further pressure when the rough development completes and the increased reliance on home delivery using vans has to be factored in for homes that are not on the public highway on a down or long track. Local residents cannot understand why the applicants own Oakfield driveway being used for access it provides a short direct link straight onto Skipton Old Road and was a preferred alternative from LCC. Surely, if a better and safer access option is available, then this should be insisted upon. Doing so would massively reduce the future impact of any development for so many people in the local area. We strongly urge the committee to refuse permission on the grounds of highway safety and unnecessary future traffic impact due to the wrong access choice. 
damage to the conservation area by substandard designs, where only the highest quality of scheme should be considered acceptable and made more possible once the water well has been addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holhouse. I'm sorry if you heard my voice. There was somebody talking in the background. I was going to try and get them to be quiet. Because okay. I, I couldn't hear all you were saying, but I think I got most of it. Unless anybody else didn't hear all of that, we can move on. We're happy with that. Okay, next I have Mr. Peter Cunningham and David Ramsden. Cunningham? Who goes, yeah, who goes first, Peter or myself? You have the floor. Chair, can I um, start um, and address the committee, if you don't mind? It's Peter Cunningham here. Yes, certainly. Um, first of all, Chair, could I defend uh, my agent, uh, Mr David Ramsden? Because there were certain me. comments that have been made by uh, objectors who called him uh, duplicious um, and also called him to question his professionality um, and that he has fabricated um, documentation and application put before you. Uh, can I tell you that that is completely the opposite and that um, over the past two years, Mr. Um, Ramsden has worked very closely and carefully with all of the agents, uh, all of the officers of um, Pendleborough Council. Um, I want to address the following issues in terms of highways access, ancillary matters, design and also amendments in line with the local and national planning requirements, if you don't mind. In relation to access and highways that's been mentioned and these issues have been addressed by qualified engineers and the legal representations made to Pendleborough Council and Lancashire County Council, Kelly Holt, who's the Highways Development Support Engineer, succinctly summarised the issues in her response and her concerns and they appear on the Pendleborough Council planning site dated 27th of January 9, uh, 2021. To summarise, Chair, she asserts that Lancashire County Council have visited the site on numerous occasions and therefore Lancashire County Council have no concerns in relation to the legal and safe track access from Bents to the development site. And she states that it's perfectly adequate. Quoting recent and relevant highway accident data, she goes on to say that the Highways Authority have no concerns over the junctions of Skipton Old Road with Bents and Keithley Road, as there have been no police report accidents in over five years and says it's an exemplary safety record. Miss Holt from Lancashire County Council Highways also goes on to say that the development will not present a significant impact on highway safety. Miss Holt goes on to state that a precedent has been set by previous planning inspector in 1992, who stated as a matter of public record that the extravehicular movements attributed to two houses will not have a noticeable effect on highway safety. The planning inspector described the site as derelict uh, in 1992, but refused permission. And this was due to the very high barrier to overcome in 1992, developing land and overcoming opposing assertions from Pendleborough Council that it was being designated as a green belt site. The Pendleborough Council planning team and policy advisors and legal team can confirm that this piece of land has never been in Greenbelt, nor has it been assigned as Greenbelt. Up to 2018, this, <coughs> this site remained um, slightly derelict and, and also abandoned and was subject to fly tipping by local residents. Uh, On-site inspections by various public Pendleborough Council environment officers and um, our own environmental experts, they advise the clearing of dead diseased trees. And Lee Johnson has been very much involved in that and advised even as recently as this year that two um, ash trees need to be removed because they are diseased and are a danger to the public and to other ash trees um, across England. Through liaison with the planning officer, the potential development for a much needed local housing was suggested, and this came through Pendleborough Council officers themselves. David Ramson from Den Architecture has an extensive portfolio and has um, a sympathetic, sensitive, specialist understanding approach to conservation area site development. 
on our behalf, he liaised with um, uh, local authority qualified solicitors in relation to a way forward, who recommended applying to Bendelborough Council for planning in principle. And this was applied for and granted as far back as 2019. And I applaud the way that Mr. Ramsden has worked with Pendleborough Council to establish what I can only describe as two exceptional properties that are built on the principles and the vernacular of um, this beautiful conservation area. And I also state that the area now, this land that we've got now, has been redeemed from what was a, a terrible site to look at and potentially dangerous um, to people who lived in the area. I hand over to David Ramson, Chair, and thank you for listening to me. Chair, okay, Mr Ramson, I'm, I'm afraid you've also spoken up most of the time. We're at four hours, 52 seconds at the moment. So I'm going to be very generous and give you a minute. It's a rather disappointing because the, the objectives have had 25 minutes and I'm the architect on the, the proposal. The, the, the the is can, you, can you can ask the people to mute? I can't hear what you're saying for background Don't discussions. Okay, let's try and deal with that. So I'll stop my clock. Can everybody please check their microphone? I can see here a, a, a quite small oh, child, I believe, uh, chattering away in the background. Right, well, I'm actually thrown now. I mean, one minute, I can't do it in a minute, to be quite honest with you. I'm, I'm actually thrown from script because of the, of the well, um, Miss Hopkins' clock, comment. Mr. Babson, before I start the clock, yeah. the legal advice we had, and I think we gave this to you the last time that you came to committee, was that we were to allow you jointly five minutes. Is that correct, Mr. Watson? Yes, Jim, that's advice we've had from okay. council on, on other situations. I wasn't here last time, not had that, but fair enough. Okay, I will, yeah. I will give you a minute because I'm trying to be fair, all right? So Thank you me. need to be quick. That's disgraceful. Right, okay, well, I'm really thrown off script now completely. I can't read it, there's three minutes there, bang on, that I took a lot of time to, to, to put together. What I would say is I'm really disappointed that you didn't, Pull uh, the lady earlier who called me duplicious and called in the integrity of, the, of myself. I've been practiced personally as an architect for 32 years. I do a lot of heritage work, um, listed building work, works with Heritage England. I've got a, a reputation that's not duplicious, and, that, uh, and I, I was disappointed that you did not um, call that in. So I've got to keep consider my legal position with the committee and yourselves on that right now because I can't have that in the public sphere. That you were calling me duplicious. You never, you didn't criticise the lady for what's the word, um, fabrication or fabricating drawings and information. If you speak to the planner, we use a Revit system. Everything that we show is absolutely bang on accurate. Everything is accurate that we do. Um, the design, we work closely with the conservation officer. And I th I, to be fair, I think some people might be looking at the old drawings. The new drawings are not a, a standard pair of, se pair of semis. They work closely with the local vernacular detailing, the window detailing, the proportions. Um, and yeah, I mean, I I'm quite happy with the, the final outcome. Um, I don't know whether people have got the current drawings, to be fair. OK, right, Mr. Ramson, so... Yeah, can I make a point of order, please? Yeah, I can hear you, Councillor Grace. Just two seconds, because I want to put Mr. Ramson straight about something. It is not my job, job to tell members of the public at a public meeting what they can say and what they can't. It's for me to judge as to whether I believe what they're saying, and that's what every councillor will do. So we've listened to what you said, and we'll listen to what they say. I think. So you allow slander statement in a, in this forum. That's between you and somebody else. That's nothing to do with me. I'll great. take issue. I've got the names. I'll take oh, issue. That's Mr. Yeah. But that's not, I've never had a planning a, a committee where the chairman has not stopped a member of the public from issuing slanderous statements. Never had that before in a council forum. Then this is a very new experience for you today. Can they call me? Is it a hate crime? Do you want to call me names? You know, yeah. what I'm going to... Graves. Disgraceful. But, um... Lynn, if you keep getting interrupted, will you switch Mr. Ramsden off? Uh, Thank you. Councillor Greaves. I want to make a point of order. Please do. Uh, I don't understand what council's opinion has got to do with this. I have nothing to do with this application whatsoever. Um, but it seems to me that Mr Ramsden um, is getting angry. Um, 
there is no doubt that the objectors have been given a considerable time to make their case, quite rightly in my view, and the um, applicants, for some reason, the two people are being restricted to five minutes between them. I think this is um, not fair. I can't understand why both sides are not being treated equally. I don't want to challenge your chairmanship, Chairman, because you've got advice, but I would like to propose that Mr. Ramsden is allowed to make the presentation that he came here to make, um, and then we can judge both sides fairly, one against the other. That's what I'd like to propose. Yeah, that's absolutely fine, Councillor Grease. Before I, I take that any further, I would like to bring Mr. Watson in for him to tell you what he told me a month ago when this was discussed at length after being given advice by Council. And the reasons for that is to protect us against claims. So, Mr. Watson. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, we go back to, to what the standing orders are about representation. And uh, if you gave five minutes per uh, person, uh, an applicant or an objector could roll up with 15 consultants and you'd end up with two hours, uh, three, four hours per, per party. Chairman, the advice we got from uh, David Hardy, a council, when we dealt with the supermarket was it's five minutes per individual party. So if you're an objector and as an individual, you have five minutes, the next objector gets five minutes and then the supporter gets five minutes, but you don't get five minutes for you, plus then uh, five minutes for an architect, then a lawyer, and then whomever. Uh, and it's not a balance in terms of uh, our constitution doesn't say uh, equal time between uh, for for a, uh, an argument and for, or uh, against an argument. It is uh, you as an individual make representations, and if you want to do that with your uh, architect then you have five minutes split between you similar with objectors otherwise uh, uh we will get into a situation where ev anyone could bring a, uh, along with them five or six uh consultants and that's what we said and uh, to be fair that's what we did indicate quite clearly uh, the last committee uh, to to the parties uh chairman so that's the advice we we had uh because ultimately processes are judicially challengeable and the fair process is five minutes per party, Chairman. OK, so I've got one other question. I've got Councillor Lord there who wishes to speak. I've got one other question for you, Neil. If we as councillors said, OK, we will listen to the three minutes or five minutes from uh, the agent uh, acting for Mr Cunningham, does that put us in a legal position that is a worry? Chairman, uh, unless somebody is going to judicially review us, and I think based on what's gone on, uh, that's, you know, someone's, uh, it's, it's unlikely to prejudice us. Chairman, if you wished to give that latitude bearing in mind what's gone, I don't think we were going to end up in the, the, the high court. But uh, That's what uh, I'd like to do then, Mr Watson, just to give the, okay. the man the, the freedom to speak, which is what all this country is supposed to be about. Let, let's hear what he says. And I would say to Mr Cunningham, the applicant, he was told about this. He chose to take for four and a half minutes and not deal with the issues of his application. So one side of me wants to punish him for being silly uh, rather than to listen to what his agent's going to say. But on this occasion, I will let the man speak and give him the extra time. Are you happy with that, Councillor Greaves? Uh, that seems to me to be common sense. And... Uh... It's always the way I've known this committee to operate. If 15 people turned up, then obviously there would have to be a judgment made. But 15 yeah. people haven't turned up. So I thank you, Chair, for being sensible and reasonable. I, I, I was working on what I was informed. You know, so if, if the people that have spoken tonight took umbrage at that and took this to appeal, we could be open to a claim. That's that's the legal position. Councillor Lord, you had your hand up. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, yeah. Chair. Uh, I was going to say that I agreed with um, Councillor Grease's proposal, and um, and so you know things have been sorted now, and and the gentleman is allowed to speak, um, and and also surely the objectors want to hear what he has to say. 
Um, so thank you for sorting that, and okay. Neil and Councillor Greaves. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. It was, you know, it was to protect us all from what we don't want to lose, which is to lose that in the bill, and it costs all the residents' money. It's not our money; it's the residents' money. That's the that's the issue. Okay, Mr. Ramsden, can you still hear me? I can, yes, thanks. Yeah. Okay, you have three. Well, five minutes is what is on the statute. But oh, that's more than enough. More than enough. Three um, minutes. Yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Um, yeah. So, as you, as you may be aware, a pre-application was submitted. Over 18 months ago, it received a very positive response from the Planning Authority <clears throat> with regards to the development of two dwellings in the location proposed for this site. The pre-application detailed two large detached dwellings. <clears throat> uh, we understand that the current proposal is fully compliant with regards to residential development in this location within the conservation area. It, it does not fall, obviously, within the boundaries of the Green Belt. Uh, there have been many months of negotiation to ensure compliance with highway, environmental and conservation area issues. And uh, we've had a lot of assistance, to be fair, from the planning officer and the conservation officer. And, you know, I thank them for their patience. Uh, the current scheme proposes two modest sized three bedroom dwellings, which align with the main boundary of Skipton Old Road. The detached garages are placed... and grain, which is completely sympathetic to its surroundings and the wider conservation area, this being linear and random footprints, often without buildings. <clears throat> Although the application site is sat within a, a group, groups of buildings that were built in the 20th century, the scale and detail of the proposed propose is influenced by the existing traditional buildings within the conservation area, particularly the original cottage of Higher Stanroyd, which lies to the eastern boundary of the proposal. Although this cannot be related to directly due to the significant high boundary planting, for clarity, I am referring to not to the 1990s extension wraparound to Highest Android, but to the original building. The fenestration of the proposed dwellings employs the proportion and detailing seen in the conservation area. And of course, all material specified will be natural stone and slate, together with timber windows and doors. We're using permeable gravel for hard surfaces. Dwellings and garages um, do not impede the root protection area of the mature chestnut tree adjacent to the boundary wall on Skipton Old Road, but should it be considered by the obvious that all, all the engineers that there may be future problems, we have, uh, which we have no reason to believe at present, then a, 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 a design so solution such as a raft foundation could be employed. <clears throat> we are suggesting a number of new trees will be planted approximately two metres from the boundary wall of Old Skipton Road, we said silver birch is an example, but again, that's open to condition. However, we would expect to produce a detailed landscape scheme going forward to satisfy any conditions. I believe, and this is very important, the 3D images provided, the 3D images set against photographs up Skipton Hall Road, particularly the view from further up Skipton Hall Road, emphasise how the current design solution sits sympathetically with its location and has a very similar relationship with Skipton Hall Road as the existing houses particularly with regards to level change between the road and the dwellings, the position of the dwellings and the overall aesthetic. Um, again, I, you know, I don't want to, I want these houses to look right. We're not trying to hide them. Trees will grow, they'll come back, they'll grow again. Um, we believe that if you look at that, our, I'd like the 3D images to be displayed of the code set against the photographs that we provided. But in summary, I believe that the revised current proposal provides a positive solution and addition to its, its location and wider environment. And we've worked hard to achieve that. And I, you know, I, I just hope that people have seen the current drawings and not some of the historical drawings. But then, no, that's it. Thank you. I can assure you we've seen all the latest that's been provided to the council. OK. Uh, uh, Mr Watson gets it. We even had an application that sent something in at one o'clock this afternoon, which we had looked at and commented on before this meeting. So I can assure, assure you of that. Mr. OK, thank you. Can I, can I ask you to comment on perhaps some of the issues that were raised by all the speakers, if you could just collect that up before we put it out for discussion. And a couple of things I picked up on that I'd like you to comment on, which is design, which seems to be quite crucial to this, whether the design is suitable for this site, and the water issues. Yeah, the actual design. So the design itself picks no, up... Mr. Ranz, I, sorry, Mr. Ranz, I was asking for Mr. Watson, the, the planning officer now, that, okay. That's all for you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, thanks for your time. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman. I was, I was going to come on to, uh, to this. Chairman, 
Uh, I feel that there's quite a lot of uh, emotion in uh, in what people say. That's nothing wrong with that at all. But Chair, I'm just trying to guide uh, committee on onto the actual issues that that uh, I think we should focus on. Design access clearly are uh, 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 issues there, Chairman. Uh, I'm going to just show you uh, a Google Earth uh, image that uh, you, uh, you 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 will look at, Chairman. Design is, is critical here, uh, as it, it is in every conservation area. But, Chairman, in this particular location, there are a range of designs that you will see of uh, houses. Uh, one of the common features is a relative simplicity of build here. You've got some, obviously, uh, uh, interwar uh, property. I guess uh, uh, they are interwar. But, Chairman, there is, there is no one single vernacular style here that uh, we can hang a, hat, a design hat on to say this must uh, follow the, this particular uh, design. Uh, the buildings are in a row of, of, of properties. They, they would be classed as an, in, an info plot. It's whether that fits in with, with that general uh, uh, view, uh, Chairman. And, and the test is, does it preserve and enhance uh, the conservation area, Chairman? Uh, what we have uh, here, in our view, is it is a simple design. We don't want anything that's uh, 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 modern. Uh, it, it's low key. It's set back. It's stepped. It's got a slate roof and simple uh, 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 designs there. And that that is a common theme. And that's particularly one of the comments which was made in the uh, the appeal on Windermere Avenue about the simplicity and regulation of design. So, Chairman. That is the advice that we, 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 we've been uh, working with the developer uh, on. Uh, just on that point, Chairman, just I think this is clear to members anyway, but for members of the public, we've worked with the developer in the same way we will work with any developer, uh, giving advice to proposal. It's, it's, it's no more or less a relationship than uh, uh, what we would do with, 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 with any uh, developer. Chairman, uh, the highway impacts. Uh, Comments have been made around uh, uh, appeals, etc. Planning guidance, planning policy has changed. The impact must now be a significant impact. I would, Chairman, in your deliberations, again, guide you, Chairman, if I just go to a, uh, a plan, if I can. Chairman, you have a small run of narrow track, we accept that, but it does. It serves one property. You've got some small passing places, and again, the track to the road serves a low number of properties. The number of houses to be built is low in terms of highway numbers, uh, and this is a, a highway terminology. The additional traffic will be insignificant. Chairman, you have to look at if there will be a danger on that track, and Chairman. It is straight. There are passing places, whether they're private or not, but they, they are in existence. Uh, Chem, in your deliberations, this isn't uh, an A-Rod and the number of units uh, being uh, proposed are small. There will be very limited uh, highway uh, movements on there. Chem, uh, uh, last comment on that as well. Uh, yeah, there is a track. Uh, I know people have called it a heritage track, etc., I haven't found anything that says it has a particular significance like Saw and Helen or something, which is a, a Roman road. And, Chairman, if the, the track does become uh, a road, you can put a condition on to require its reinstatement. And, Chairman, uh, that would be my advice if people are concerned about uh, it being uh, eroded. Uh, you can put a condition on to say it has to be reinstated, Chairman. I don't think that is... Uh, grounds for uh, a refusal. Chairman, in terms of, of water and the comment made about, uh, if I go back on to take that off, uh, we don't ask for construction details because that's dealt with under building regulations. They require uh, properties to be built uh, structurally sound and uh, safely and the impact on any infrastructure is, is clearly something for United Utilities, but there's nothing that uh, we're concerned with in terms of the ability to 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 reroute that that uh, water uh, main chairman. There is a, a possibility for doing that, and that can be achieved on site. And as I said, the structural uh, 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 
construction of, of, of the properties is for the building uh, regulations uh, to control. Chairman, that, that's all I have to say. Just I think w the, the issues are relatively small here, uh, design, and you need to look what's around because it's not homogenous there. Our view is that it's a simple design. That's what the area needs. It's set back low key, and that's what uh, is appropriate in the locality. Clearly, you may have uh, other views on that. And Chairman, uh, in highway terms, I would have to say that two houses will not have a, a significant impact on the highway. I would, uh, my strong professional advice here is that that is not a reason to refuse the application. Thank you, Neil. Councillors, it's, it's open to discussion now. Councillor Lord, you still have your hand up. Is that correct? Do you want to speak now or are you? No, it's an old hand like me. Good. Good. Okay, councillors, then looking for hands. If not, I'll uh, propose the officer's recommendation. Councillor Coburn Price. I think what didn't come across in the uh, the residents' representations is that nobody, I don't think anybody, is against the development of this site for housing. And councillors in the virtual room will know that that's quite unusual. Um, I think that really, although this report says a proof, it is the most lukewarm proof that it's possible to have. Um, now, I know Councillor War, well, okay, I know Councillor War said don't read things out, but, you know, looking at the heritage section, it says an adverse impact on the character and appearance of the conservation area. This was mainly due to the site being highly visible from Skipton on the road, and the land dif differences exacerbate this, as well as from the public. And then, sort of turning over the page, you know, like passing over the large dominant buildings. Um, we've got the section on design from our conservation officer, and it's clear that she's not quite happy yet. Um, you know, she, she is concerned about the width at 18.7 metres. She's concerned about the starkness. Um, she's concerned about the render of the garages. She's a little bit concerned about the porches. And this reminds me of an earlier application in this conservation area, very near this house. I think a lot of you will know which house we're talking about here. It came to the committee several times and each time it improved. This application has been through several iterations without coming to committee and each time it has improved. And I feel that for the conservation area, we should be going for Rosemary Lyons completely happy um, for, so that we can do what um, Neil Watson said, which is to protect and enhance. Um, I feel as well that really any application that relies too heavily on screening suggests it's not good enough. Um, screening is to hide something, isn't it? You know, it's an ugly wall, put some ivy up it. So I would say that on, on the basis of design, we're not quite yet there yet, especially in terms of height, prominence, dominance, starkness, with the fact that this is an unusually placed property within the conservation area. It's very prominent from the Lidget from the Lidget Triangle behind and Skipton Up Road in the front. With regard to highways, Bent Lane is called Bent Lane for a reason. I mean, we've got the bent bit, the bent bit which comes onto Skipton Old Road, which is not easy. And then we've got the super bent bit, which goes onto Bents and Bent Lane, which is worse. And albeit that there might be s virtual or actual or passing places on somebody else's land, it doesn't really matter. I can see the need to do reversing. And you don't want to be doing reversing onto Skipton Old Road, and you don't want to be doing reversing with Bent Lane and Bent's being a major route to a school there either. So I know the traffic's moving very slowly, but that reminds me of the application that we had at Folridge Vicarage, which, if you remember, LCC said was not very many houses and reasonable, and you can mount the pavement and it's all slow moving. But... In fact, it's the same situation here. It is a danger. 
um, Councillor Nixon came to my house, not to see me, but to post a Christmas card through my uh, letterbox. And um, he told me afterwards that he thought, oh, I took the opportunity to have my own site visit in Bent Lane. I don't know whether he'll tell you about this. Perhaps I could be uh, sealing his thunder. Anyway, he's proud of his car. He got part way. He thought, oh, no, this is going badly. And he did the reverse just to get out of the whole area because, of course, it's, it's not a made road. So I feel that if we want this application to go ahead, it's so easy because actually LCC gave us an obvious recommendation, which is that they just about thought it was OK, rather like the, the, the Folridge Vicarage situation. But the clear safe position would be to have access off Skipton Old Road up the driveway for Oakfield. That would be safe for pedestrians, for people who live on Bent Lane, for people who are travelling to school. So on that basis, I would recommend that we turn this application down, pending an improvement in, in the design, and we condition the access that LCC want us to go for, which is Skipton Old Road. I'll see whether anybody else agrees with me or disagrees with me. Okay, thank you for that. I've got uh, Councillor Foxley. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, well, Sarah's touched on some of what I was going to say, so I'll keep it very brief. Um, but um, I have to say that my heart always sinks when uh, I read in a report um, within a conservation area that appropriate landscaping can effectively screen the proposed development. Um, I, you know, I think it's interesting that um, uh, David Ramsden um, has uh, has said in his address to us that um, he's not trying to hide the buildings, and that's that's uh, that's good because I, I think it's it's very sad when one has to has to do. Um, and he, he said something to the effect that trees come and go, which I'm sure uh, we all feel. But the the um, the thing with this is that. Um, I'm, if I'm being brutally honest, I, I think this is just a lacklustre design. Um, it is simple, which is appropriate, I would agree, but it's lacklustre. Um, is it good enough? We could debate that all night, I suspect. Um, I'm afraid I don't agree with the, uh, uh, I would take, some slight issue with, with something that Mr. Watson said, um, because I think there's a, there's a bit of a um, an odd situation here. If we have a situation where this uh, conservation area has no set vernacular style, which I would again completely agree with, um, but then uh, why would it not be therefore possible to have a modern design in this conservation area? That's a bit of a side issue. That doesn't really apply to what we're looking at here because the attempt has been, in this instance, to produce something which looks like the old vernacular of some of the older properties. I personally don't think it really succeeds in that, and that's why I'm not really happy with it from a design point of view. I agree also that the other access would be better, but my personal view is that alone I would not um, vote against this um, to, 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 you know, I would not be looking to refuse this on that on that alone. That's my view. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Councillor Coburn Price, would, would you be happy to modify your original proposal in light of what uh, Councillor Foxley said? I, I do feel very strongly about that access. I know I live in the area and I would never try to drive there because it's so close to my house. I would walk there. Um, but I really do feel that if councillors doubt me on the on, on the Bent Lane Bent situation and nobody is prepared to second me, that we should call for a site visit because I think if you stood there, it would be really obvious. OK, Councillor Nixon. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? I'm I can, yeah. There's yeah. lots of echoes and bangings, but yeah, I can hear you. Um, <clears throat> I missed most of what 
Sarah said because of my internet dropped again. <clears throat> but I I have personally seen what the access is like. Um, I try. I went for a site visit there before Christmas just to work out the lay of the land. And basically, I went down this track. Turns out, I think it's bent. Not quite sure. I had to reverse all the way back up, and I'm probably reversing to somebody's house in in doing so. I'm really sorry about that. Um, it was a joke, but that just basically tells you how bad the access is down there. I would agree we should try and condition that the access to the two to, to the uh, to the new development is via the existing driveway off Skipton Old Road rather than Bent uh, and Bent Lane. So I, I'd, I'd support Sarah on that one, but I, I don't mind uh, a development going there, but it's got to be right for the conservation area, and access has got to be right at the end of the day. I don't know whether you heard any of that. Yeah, I did. So just for clarity, what Sarah's proposal is, which she's looking for a seconder from, is, is poor design and change the access. Well, design, I, I, I don't think it's too bad. But, that, you know, who am I? I'm just... <laughs> A local council at the end of the day i would refuse it on access grounds not design but basically okay. right okay anybody else wish to speak Ch chairman hey. uh i i uh, sorry it's, it's uh neil again sorry yeah. chairman yeah. Uh, i do have a problem with uh the second yeah. part of that on highways and saying it uh refused because there's another access chairman that I think is a cost issue for us. Uh, you, you can't make decisions based on, or we want a better alternative. Uh, Chairman, if it, it, which effectively is what the resolution is. Yeah. And if that's the case, Chairman, uh, I would have to say that there's a, a risk of cost and it would have to stand referred to policy and resources. Chairman, the, the test is not that, it's whether uh, there will be a significant, and that's a test, a significant impact on on the highway. And, Chairman, I've not heard anything to say yet that the, there might be a small inconvenience. I, I accept that. I think LCC do, but the impact has to be significant for it to pass the national policy test. Okay. Yes, Calvin Price, would you like to come back? Yeah, just a question to Neil. I mean, LCC clearly in their report state that the best access is Skipton Old Road. They state that. They they do say that there are problems, and on the balance, they, in a really kind of up and down report from LCC, they sort of say, well, go on then, it's not that many houses. But actually, they then clearly say they prefer Skipton Old Road as access. Surely, if they clearly state that, we should we could condition it. Uh, no, Chairman, you, you, you've got to decide it on the merits of what is before you, and the, the merits of what's before you is an access uh, off uh, Bent's, uh, Bent's Lane as such. So, Chairman, you, you can't say we will. In effect, this is a resolution to say we prefer another access. That isn't uh, some something we can do, and, and we would certainly get costs against us. Uh, on on uh, that basis, you'd have to demonstrate, or be in your view, there is an alternative, but that's an aside. Here, we believe that there is a significant impact on the, on on highway safety from this current access. And Chairman, I've not heard that yet in in the debate. Right. Any any Anybody else want to speak? So, councillors, then the problem uh, which you've all you've all heard, we have a proposal on design and access. We have one councillor on access, and the other one on design and not access. So we've got three separate opinions. Um, so if I don't hear any other alternative, I will propose from the chair, unless anybody else wants to throw their cap in the ring what the officers have recommended. Nobody? Chairman, Councillor Clegg has indicated he wishes to speak. 
Councillor Craig, please. Thank you, Chairman. I am equally not happy with the access coming from the bends. And I think the way forward with this is, as you, as Mr Watson has said, we can't condition something in that's not currently on the table. But what we can do is make a decision on what is currently on the table. And if Sarah is happy to change what she has moved slightly and move refusal on the current proposal for the access, I am quite happy to second refusal on that with her. OK, so what you're saying is access is an issue for you, but not design. Yes. You're happy with the design. OK, so I think we have we, you, you have you have an ally uh, with Councillor Nixon already. Well, that's two of you. So if Sarah, it's up to you. Do you wish to change your motion or should we start that and start again? I think possibly you should propose it from the chair and we vote on the officer's report. Because I don't think we're, we're going to easily agree. I feel very strongly that the design isn't quite right yet for the conservation area. So yeah. I'd be very sad to let that point go. And I also feel strongly that the double buying corners of Bents and Bent Lane and Skipton Old Road and Keithley Road is a bit of a nightmare, even at slow speed. So let's let's vote on your proposal from the chair. OK. So I have two councillors proposing access to be significantly uh, unsuitable uh, as proposed in this application. So that is what I propose for a reason for refusal. Will somebody second that? Councillor Clegg? Yes, Chairman, I'll second it so that we have some sort of progress. Okay, so Chair we have a proposal and a seconder for refusal due to access. Chairman, sorry, uh, my, my advice still stands. I don't think that's a defensible position. Uh, so it would stand as a referral to uh, uh, legal no. services. It's just on, on highways. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that, Neil. So that, that's the proposal on the table. So if we can have a vote on that, um, I think we'll have to do a name vote on, on this because it's... Uh, <laughs> so I'll, I'll just call your name and you, you can tell me whether you're against refusal or not, basically. So you're for refusal or you're not. So, Butterworth, Neil, are you for refusal? No contact. I will try again at the end for Butterworth, Neil. Clegg, David? For. Coburn, Price, Sarah? For. Fletcher, Victoria? For. Foxley, Margaret? Four. Foxley Paul. Abstain. Greaves Anthony. Four. Lord Dorothy. Four. Man Alice. Four. McCullum Nathan. Not here, I don't think. Absent. Nixon Jonathan. Four. War, Graham, I proposed it, so I have to say four. Uh, so we have one abstention, the rest are four. So the application is refused on unsuitable access. Okay, sorry, Chairman, it's, sorry, Chairman, just to clarify, it stands referred on, on that ground as advised, so we would... Yeah, sure. Uh, so seek legal advice to see whether it, it, that stands, Chairman. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So just for the sake so the applicant understands, this committee has, has chosen to refuse it. That is not the end of the matter internally. It will now go to uh, Policy and Resources Committee uh, at their meeting and they will make the final decision. It's like an internal appeal decision, um, for the want of a better word. Is that that's correct, Neil, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Yes, Chairman. Okay. Effectively. Yep. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, the meeting of the Policy and Resources Committee is on the 18th of March. Okay. 
on the 18th of March, it will be determined then. So, but that's for the benefit of Mr. Cunningham and uh, Mr. Ramsden. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you everybody that uh, contributed to that. Um, I, I think we did very well to get through that number of speakers and get that amount of work done in that time. Uh, that could have easily have taken all night. And I thank you, for everybody, for your cooperation. I'm sorry to, to the agent and Mr Cunningham about the, the, the time. That was the legal advice we were given. That is still the legal advice that we have. So we made an exception in this case, we hope, uh, as an extension of, of fairness so that you at least feel, whether you agree with us or not, that you got a fair hearing. That's all we can achieve. Okay? So thank you very much. So moving on then. Chair, Chair, before you move on, if I disappear, it's because I'm having problems with my uh, devices charging. So I'm <laughs> alternating between my phone and my iPad as okay. each one's charging. I don't know what's going on, but it's draining my batteries. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll see you floating in and out, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Planning appeals. Anybody, any comments to make? No, enforcement actions. Item seven. Anybody, any queries, comments? Chairman, just a note on Langride Hall. Yep. Uh, I was there this morning. Uh, uh, work is ongoing on the roof. The roof is almost uh, complete with the uh, re required uh, uh, stru construction for the bats. Uh, then the roof is a finishing shortly and they will be looking at the internal work. No work has yet started on the uh, uh, other buildings which were granted planning permission. So, Chairman, we're, we're, we're uh, almost there with the restoration of the roof. Thank you. So then, capital programme. Uh, just, well, yeah. I would like to record a vote of thanks to uh, Neil Watson for and his team for all the immense hard work that they've put in to shepherding uh, Langroyd Hall. I'm touching yeah. wood. Yeah. Um, to safety, um, and I think we all look forward to seeing the building restored. It's been a very, very worrying position, and without officers being so hard working on it, I don't think that we'd have got here. Absolutely, I totally agree with you, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Neil. That could have been so easily an absolute disaster, but it wasn't. Thank goodness. Yeah, good. Okay, moving on then. As for councillors' information, I have asked Lynn to forward round sometime in the next couple of weeks the financial records for each of us so anyone can see if they've got any any money left in the pot before the end of the year. That, that full report will not be coming to the final meeting in four weeks' time. So that gives you a few weeks to have a look at it and do something about it if you wish to. So I have uh, one bid in. Um, Mr. Gott, are you here? Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to uh, say the words. Hope you're all well. Uh, yes, I'm the chairman of Condomatic Society. Are you all able to hear me? We are. Yeah, yes, we thank you. As I said, during the lockdown, we've done a few uh, refurbishments and that. We've redecorated the auditorium and done some electrical work, which is due to be finished eventually. Uh, but we need to look at some outside work on the roofing, etc., and also improvements on the stage. Uh, we hope to maybe uh, put the curtain up uh, in the auditorium because we've had a screen up for quite some time. So, so there's quite a lot of work still to be done, and uh, it's still dating to our reserves quite dramatically, you know, in a way. So, this is why we've uh, applied to you to uh, see if there's any funding available for us. Okay, so I'll, I'll just tell you off the top to speed things up. I've spoken to quite a few councillors on this, and, and generally speaking, we, we would like to help you, uh, for sure. The, the, the application is very sketchy, I have to say. Um, 
if you come back to the next meeting with some firm quotes from somebody, you know, to cover the work, then we can give it that consideration and allocate some funds to it. But at the moment, I'd have to say to you that particular application is very sketchy. Yeah. Um, well, I think you agree, dear. We've been handwritten. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, would, that. so you want some quotes? I would ask for some quotes and I would suggest to councillors that perhaps we then discuss that at, at the next meeting. That yeah, gives yeah, us yeah. a chance. So I've got a couple of hands up here. I've got Councillor Greaves and Councillor Coburn Price. Councillor Greaves. Yes, yeah. Um I agree with what you've said. Um the we, we all know the little theatre is a little gem, really. It, it's quite a while since I've been there for a performance, but uh, it is quite a little gem. It's part of Cone's tradition, part of its heritage, yeah. and part of its cultural, you know, and, uh, as they'd say, off, run by volunteers, and it's something which I think we should be supporting. Um, I had some brief discussions with another member of the Little Theatre group some time ago, but I think she's had to step down and John's taken over looking after this. And um, he rang me up and I suggested that um, he should get hold of a form and uh, put in an application. No idea what the amount would be. I don't know whether we can afford all this, but we can certainly, in my view afford quite a bit of it but um, in in order to uh, decide how much we want to pay and how much we can afford we have to have some figures really against all these items i think the items are desirable and they are uh, very worthy of support but we need to know even if we're not going to fund it all we need to know how much it's going to cost and then we can make a decision of how much we can put forward. So I su fully support uh, your proposal, Chair. We'll have it at the next meeting, which is fairly soon, isn't it? Yeah. Is it three weeks rather than... Yeah, it's the, the end of this month. Is four. It? It the end of this month. So, so, I mean, that means that um, John and the little third of people have got to get the skates on um, okay. in order to... To, to, to get some firm figures of, of, of what they're talking about. I know they have already spent a lot of money on the place um, and done work, and uh, it, it, uh, it wants finishing, really. So I very much support what you've said, and I hope that when it comes back next time, we'll be able to be as generous as we possibly can. Yeah. Right, thank you very much for that, Tony. Yes, I need to do that. So should I send all the posts to Hang on, Mr. Gott. We've got other people wanting to speak. Thank you. Councillor Coburn Price. I also would like to support the Little Theatre. I love going there and not being allowed to stand up in the interval and being brought things to my own seat. Excellent for the lazy. Um, but I did advise you, John, or I advised um, some of your colleagues to apply for the Culture Recovery Fund. And I don't think you got in in the first round. The second round is still open. If you haven't applied, you will almost certainly get money and possibly quite an, a nice sum. <laughs> so if you're getting these quotes, get them quickly, get the application in for the Culture Recovery Fund, and you might not need to come back to us, who knows, for quite so much next time. Um, but uh, I think that probably I agree with Councillor Greaves that this is too big a sum for Cone Area Committee, but let's see what we can do. And a heads up to the other councillors that Lidget and Beyond will be submitting a bid to the next. Um, we've got all the quotes and I think you'll be receiving that um, for the next area committee. Um, and that will be for a walk around the whole of Cone, like a beating the bounds walk um, that's been worked up with Tom Partridge. So I think that that's probably something that councillors would like to consider as well. Thank you. Yeah. So I need to get the quotes into Lee and uh, any other information for the next meeting. Yeah, that's right. We, we need we need to see a more detailed proposal. Um, so you, you need somebody to say, 
three points in the building. I've been and inspected it, and it's going to cost five thousand pounds. Stripping the roof back, putting the felt back, whatever that a professional builder is advising you, he needs to do it and give you a quote for it. And then we can look at that and, and, and make a decision. So I've got Councillor Nixon, then we'll let you go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have quite a bit of capital fund left to spend before the end of this municipal year. Uh, and I would extend a hand to John Gott that you can, you're can. more than welcome to have some of that, that capital money that I've got left to spend. Um, and if you know anyone in the... Um, amateur dramatic fraternity who would welcome such, you know, so, some some cash during these hard times. Uh, please ask them to get in touch with me. I'll be more than happy to help um, because it's it's kind of been a little bit difficult to spend all the money during a pandemic because there's not a lot going on. So uh, yes, it, it's a fantastic cause. I totally agree with everything that Councillor Colburn Price and Lord has. Uh, Set it and Greaves has said, and yeah, it's basically my email address is on the Pendle Council website. If you get in touch with me, I'll, I'll happily um, help with putting together a grant application from my in inverted commas pot of capital cash available. No, thank you very much, Jonathan. Okay, okay. yeah, Cheers. the good thing for that is that is not our money, this committee's money that actually has been allocated. To, to that councillor and he providing it's a suitable scheme has the money to to pass on to you so it doesn't need to go through us it's not such a rigorous process it's still got to be genuine obviously but it's it, it, it's a lot quicker to get hold of it so that's why i'll put the the, the, the figures out to all the councillors before the next meeting so if you have got any funds left maybe at the last meeting we can we can uh, allocate them all some way or the other so thank you very much, Mr. Gott. That's a great help. Right. Thank you all of you for listening. OK, bye. Yeah. Item nine, lease of land, Ermeroid Street. Anyone wish to speak on this? Councillor Greaves. Um, this seems... Sorry, I'm trying to, get, trying to get rid of my hand now. This seems to be um, a sensible proposal, Chair, which will assist the business, but in particular will assist in tidying up what is a pretty untidy corner at the moment, um, particularly the amount of parking which is taking place there, people just uh, littering the place with cars and so on. And I think... There are various other things go on around there which ought not to be going on, which at least fencing some of it off will sort it out. So I am happy to propose this as set out. I didn't remember, perhaps you know off the top of your head, Councillor. What, what size is the plot we're talking about? Um... I don't know. There's a map of it. Um, Is it a lot of land? I mean, what would you get on there? Well, you don't get anything on it because they're not going to do anything with it. All oh, right. Okay. Um, or at least if they do want to do anything with it, uh, the proposal is that they have to come back and ask for permission. And if it's constructing anything significant, get planning permission. I think that's right, isn't it, Mr. Watson? Sorry, so I was muted. Yes, Jim. Right. Okay. That's fine. So, Sorry. Area on the, at the moment, there's a building where it's hatched. Yeah. And squares, and, and then the dotted area is um, an unenclosed um, semi-derelict mess, really. And what they're proposing to do is to put a fence around the whole thing where the black line is. Right. Um, so each strip is about the width of. Um, a narrow street such as Primmet Street. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and it, it's it's basically an old industrial area which um, um, uh, uh, there's been a proposal for housing on the back part of it, but I don't think anybody thinks it's a desirable place to build housing. 
So uh, it will just help to tie, as far as the public generally is concerned, it will help to tidy up the area and stop a bit of antisocial behaviour and assist the business. So okay. I think it's a good thing. Somebody to second that, please. I'll second that, Chair. May I? I had my hand up, Graham. Oh, sorry, Sarah, I didn't see you yet. Go ahead. Um, I am not against the fencing or the short-term use, but I do feel a bit anxious about it. Looking as I am in the Cone Neighbourhood Plan for sustainable sites within the settlement boundary, this is one. And I think that what might not be seen to be great now, we all know areas can change. And five years, weirdly, I mean, they can pass in the blinking of an eye, but also they, they can, we could see a changed world. We don't know what's going to happen. And I think selling it to this applicant or selling it to the person that's renting it at the moment ties the councillors who are sitting here in five years' time. And I would like to keep that open. I don't know whether anybody else agrees with me because there's a possibility that it could come forward for housing. I'll see whether anybody agrees with me. It could be that nobody does. It will only come forward for housing if the... Um, the, the business which is there at the moment closes down. You couldn't put housing on those two narrow strips under any circumstances. Um, if land behind between them and the railway line came forward for housing at some time in the future, then the business would either be there or not. Now, the only thing I thought was that if that whole site did become available for housing at some time in the future, and I've some doubt the people who had the option to buy and bought it might do quite well by Neil selling it. Neil Butterworth is now exiting. Right, Neil's walked out on me, never mind. Um, <laughs> I think that... Um, um, I mean, the, the only question I would have about the proposal is whether they... Have, Supposedly they should lease it, and then at the end of five years have an option to buy. I don't know if they would accept that they, after five years, they had an option to continue the lease, uh, and the question of if they wanted to buy it would come back to the council. And, I mean, if, 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 if Councillor Colburn Price wants that to be put back to them, then uh, I would not be against that. But if they say no that's not acceptable i think we take our um two penneth as well we've got it and um the future can look after itself because this particular site is not going to be suitable for housing unless they sell up completely and move or close down and move so yeah I, th uh, that is what i meant i just I, didn't I, want the hands to be tied in five years time so if that could be taken away and you'll support me that would be marvellous I don't know what I don't know how urgent this is I mean I'd just like to get on with it because it's a mess and, and if they want to tidy it up I'm in favour of that and, and make a much better place um, I don't know whether the particular site would be look at this plan again I know it anyway um you wouldn't get much housing on it. And the area which might be suitable for housing would be the area behind, between there and the railway line. Um, if, if, if it's not a then another say, we'll offer it to them on the lease. We'll say this not the lease, in which case we have the and ask them if um, that without the <laughs> yeah, councillor. Sorry, you're very broken, councillor. Agrees to me. I don't know whether anybody else is having trouble hearing you. You you coming in and out underwater with that one. All right, I'll, I'll get a bit closer. Is that better? Yeah, that is better. Can I make a suggestion then? So, right, so yeah. yeah, I will move that we grant them the lease. Yeah. With at the end of five years the option to continue the lease. Yeah. Um, so they've got the permanency. Or uh, but apply for the, the to the council. But without the option. 
Yeah. Yeah. And we'll consider it again. Yeah. That's sure. possible. Jack, can I just say something? I've had my hand up for a while. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I think I would just like to add that um, from quite a lot of past experience with, um, you know, areas that don't look on uh, at, at present maybe uh, suitable for a given development, things can change very rapidly. And um, what I would... I would I'd agree with what's been suggested um, because I think, you know, the, the point that uh, Councillor Greaves made about the, the land behind this being perhaps at, at present more suitable for housing um, is, is, is particularly relevant because if you're going to develop that site, then the last thing you want is a scruffy bit of land in front of it with whatever you know, low-grade industrial usage ends up on it um, as a result of selling it potentially. So I, I absolutely agree that that we shouldn't tie a future. Obviously, it's not it's, it's not in my gift. I'm not going to be a councillor beyond May. Um, but the the uh, the whole um, idea of not tying hands in future, I think I wholeheartedly agree with because um, you know nothing would surprise me in 10 years time that this could look a very different prospect thank you okay thank you so just to confirm that the new proposal then councillor agrees it's to allow them to rent the land for five years and then that will be revisited I think I've lost Councillor Greaves. No, he's, he's muted, Mr Chairman. Oh, right, OK. How are we doing? That, no, it's, it's not, an ordinary, it's not a, a simple rental, it's a lease. Yeah, a lease, yeah. yeah so it's the lessee, yes. Yeah. OK. All right? Yeah. Are we all happy with that? Yeah. Speak now if anybody is against. Chair, I don't actually know what I propose now. I missed half of it, to be honest. Okay, so what we're proposing is that, that we give them a lease for five years and then it will be revisited by the councillors at that time as to whether they release it to them or whether they let, uh, give them the option of buy. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, you happy with that, Councillor Nixon? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair, yes. yes. Okay. So, so every, everybody's okay with that. So that was item uh, nine. Reopening of Colne Town Centres. Anissa McAldery, are you online? I am indeed. Good evening. The floor Good is evening. Yours. Thank you very much. Um, so I just wanted to give you a quick update um, of where we're at. So we are still offering the um, free delivery and the free click and collect service. It has quietened off quite a bit with only two shops in Cone actually taking advantage of that. Um, we are going to bring it to an end at the end of this month, um, given that fingers crossed everything up. Well, the non-essentials will be back up on the 18th of April. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment with the reopening. Um, we do, um, I did a bit of an update on our AGM. Um, so I just wondered if it was okay just to quickly go through that because it does form part of the reopening as well. Um, so part of that, um, obviously, we have just recently signed up to Marketing Lancashire. So we are now members there and we are promoting ourselves on that. And we are working with them, uh, with their marketing department uh, to see, to jump on any campaigns that they've got for the reopening um, as well. So I'm just waiting to hear back from those um, on that. Um, and we'll just continue doing sort of local and national PR um, and engage with different media outlets um, in terms of the promote objective. Um, around the pride objective, um, just so you are aware, we've had four approvals for our fresh look of paint scheme and we've still got six spaces left 
So um, this can be done in conjunction with the premises improvement grant. So hopefully more businesses will come forward and apply for that. Um, around the Pride activity, we've also been um, sort of pricing up and we're currently working on uh, some hoarding to cover up the former Zebras uh, building and sort of brighten up around Higgin Chamber. So that is just all going through now. We're just making some final tweaks to the design and that should all be done ready for the 12th of April. Uh, we've got some street cleaning that's actually being confirmed down Skipton Road and on Hartley Square, which will take place later on this month, again, in preparation for the 12th of April, again, all being well. Um, I have been working as well with the local estate agents from the commercial side um, to keep empty units to a minimum. Um, and I've been sort of targeting different businesses um, to get them into the units that we have coming up. So fingers crossed, some of those will actually go through. Um, another thing we've actually been doing is a bit of a campaign around cleanup, um, a bit of a big cone cleanup, which I think I mentioned last time. So that sort of started today. Um, so myself and Christina Corp, one of our directors, actually went out and did a bit of, bit of a litter pick. Um, we also took photographs of the World Book Day window displays that we did um, for some of the businesses. I think there was about eight altogether that took part. Um, so yeah, that was quite uh, successful. And then we are doing another litter pick as a board um, on the 10th of April, which is a Saturday to really sort of give it one final push ready for the 12th of April. As you can tell, I'm very excited for the 12th. So I think I'm keeping everything crossed for that. Um, one thing we are discussing this week, um, this next week, sorry, um, which is in the pipeline for our protect objective is setting up a shop watch group to help with sort of petty crime within retail units and setting up um, something called a scheme link app which I believe is already part of pub watch so the bid is pledging to pay for year one for um, all the retail units to give them a go for the first year to see if it works um, and then if they'd like to continue it, the shops have got their own sort of choice whether or not they'd like to do that as well. Um, around the partnership objective, again, the cleanup really does sort of give that real camaraderie feel. So that does sort of fit under the partnership objective. And I will continue sort of doing our newsletters and Zoom calls and fingers crossed I'll be able to get out and actually meet all the businesses as well. So that is me. If anybody has any questions, please do let me know. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Lord? Yeah, um, not a question, but a comment. That, that is an excellent, um, an excellent update, and I'm so pleased to hear all that. You, you're obviously doing some really good work there, and... Uh, I hope that you come back each month and, and and give us an update like that. That's excellent work, Anissa. Well done. Well oh, done to everybody at, at, you know, that's involved. Thank you. I'll pass it back to the board next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Nixon. Uh, thank you for the update and all the hard work. Any news on the Peaky Blinders patrol? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> so I have Voices Barrel on board they're really happy to work with me on it so it is something that we'll need to keep an eye on with regards to when things start going back to normal so I believe we'd look at doing something after the 21st of June so it is in the pipeline and don't worry I'll be ringing you for some support <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Better to be safe than sorry, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to start planning it right now, but we've just got to keep an eye on all the dates because obviously these are the earliest dates that they're giving us. So, yeah, hopefully. Lynn, is, is Neil still with us or is he gone? Uh, still with us, I think. I so I'm listening intently here, Chairman. Sorry, sorry, Neil. 
Um, there was a couple of queries we had when you, you we discussed this. Could you could just go over those with, with us, please? Yes, Chairman. Uh, Mike Richards, who's been working uh, uh, close with Anissa and others on this, uh, uh, came forward and, and gave me some information about possible proposals for the future, uh, sorry, for the uh, reopening of high, high street funding. Those were um, uh, two uh, interactive kind of display boards, uh, uh, live display boards that either end of the, the, the town to, to give information on that. And uh, another option, which is a bit more costly, was uh, a website. Uh, Chairman, I probably think the website long term will be most effective for marketing code, I've got to say. Uh, but it is difficult to justify, as we found before, uh, work on websites because we're only funded on uh, reopening it set safely. And, and websites tend to be marketing. So, Chairman, I think um, if I was advising or, or, or putting my two penneth in, I would suggest that we can, the, the adverts may be better because you can use those afterwards uh, to, to, to market the town. And uh, we could say that they will give real time information on safety and what we're doing. I think having a website and justifying that in terms of the very stringent grant. Uh, terms, I think, will be difficult. Okay, thank you for that. Anissa, do you, do you agree with that, or do you have any view on what's been said? I put both things forward because I would love both of them in an ideal world, because <laughs> I'm greedy. But um, I do agree. I think we get more longevity with the digital screens. I think we can use them for a variety of things afterwards, as um, Neil kindly said earlier. We can have them in any colour we want, so we can put them in conservation area colours, which is also quite useful. And yeah, I think the businesses can use them to um, advertise on them. In addition to that, we can put town centre maps on where the car parks are. There's so much information we can put on them um, and it's real time information and we can update them very, very quickly. So that's the other benefit because we did look at notice boards at one point, but the problem with notice boards is, you know, as soon as somebody moves off, you've then got to update it. Whereas this, it can be done so quickly. So I agree. I think the screens would probably um, tip it here. OK. Are you looking for a decision from us to this evening? Um, that'd be lovely, yeah, if you I've, don't mind. I've got Councillor Foxley. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just a very quick question about the digital screens. How, how what, what, what uh, form does the update process take? Do you have to be physically there at the screen or can it be done re remotely? I believe it can be done remotely. All right. right, yeah. Um, it's, all on a, it's all on a 4G network, so it can be done remotely. Chairman, um, councillors need to know the costs are, are £7,000, uh, £10,000 for the website, £7,000 and just a bit above for the uh, uh, for for the digital screens. Chairman, we'd have to work forward uh, and, and, and look, you know, location is going to be important, et cetera. There, there are other issues we need to look at. I think what we would seek today would be whether uh, we've got to use the funding some, somehow, whether the committee would be uh, uh, looking at that level of commitment to, to, to those screens uh, so that we can explore it further. We're, we will have time to come back next time to give you more details, but we're going to have to uh, conclude it next time because uh, the next committees are in June and uh, we were nearing the time when we have to implement these things and it will be too late for the high street anyway because we will be back in. So it really is at this stage where the committee in principle are, are OK with spending just over £7,000, uh, and he may have the exact figures, I haven't got the email with me, on two screens, and, and we will work at, at that and bring it back to the next committee. Yep, OK. I've got Councillor Mann, and then I'll wrap it up. Oh, I was just wondering where um, these screens were going to be located. However, that's going to be discussed at another time. Yeah. Um, could you tell me where um, other towns have um, these have been used in? Um, other towns I've 
personally seen them in um gosh see I've seen them in cities generally um yeah. sort of dotted all around the place and it's usually got a directory of shops on there which I think could be quite useful for Calm Town Centre as well and they're usually quite well maintained too so it's those what those types that are in sort of shopping centres that you often yeah. see yeah yeah and, except uh, they're not yeah. interactive no no that's brilliant thank you can I suggest if we say yes to you working up this scheme ready for the next meeting in three weeks' time, perhaps we could see some pictures uh, of of what you're proposing, what, what they will look, actually look like. Would that be too much? You should be able to get them out of catalogues or something. So we've got some idea of what they're going to look like. Is that all right? Absolutely. Yeah. Is no, everybody – oh, Councillor Greaves, do you want to wish to speak? Yeah. Can I move that we provisionally allocate um, a sum in the region of £7,000, which allows them to go ahead with confidence and then come back with the details next time? Yeah, sure. It's just to, say, to give the go-ahead. Now, this is not – let me get this right, uh, Neil. This is not actually coming out of Cone area money, is it? This is the government funding, isn't it? I will Chairman, the corner area money was used for the click and collect. That's uh, although it was slightly above the allocation. I think it's ten thousand pounds from committee. Yeah, that's so right. No, not enough in that. It is the uh, reopening high streets fund. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, we're we're allocating somebody else's money. Yeah. I'll just just be oh, sure. Right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I'm I'm up for spending other people's money. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah please work. The, uh, as I say. Uh, we'll work the scheme up and we'll look at it in three with three weeks' time at the next meeting and we can hopefully give it the go-ahead then. Uh, is everybody happy with that? Yep. I've got lots of nods, so that's unanimous. Okay, thank you very much for coming and thank you for your update. Sounds very okay. positive. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Um, item 11, Cone Youth Action Group update. Councillor Foxley. Um, yeah, just Sorry. everything's going really, really well. Um, working really hard on making this happen, and it's everything's happening at a very fast rate. Um, Sarah's done all sorts of things with all sorts of groups, made lots of contacts, we've had lots of meetings. Um, we've looked around the um, centre on Byron Road. Um, we've got activities um, lined up to happen um, in April. Um, the relationship with the police around working with uh, young people who are uh, behaving in a disruptive manner. Um, that's going really, really well. We're um, carrying out some RJs next week with their parents involved as well. Um, so, yeah, it's looking really, really good. And over to Sarah. Just very briefly to say that we've uh, formally asked for the community asset transfer from LCC and they didn't actually look hostile. So, but I wait to hear and I will chivy tomorrow. Um, we have we are signing an SLA with Burnley mm -hmm. FC in the community, and we hope to have our first session on the 7th of April at King George V playing field. And Burnley FC in the community have sent um, all of their details with risk assessments and insurance to Cone Town Council, looking at Mary. And um, we very much hope, we're just nearly finishing the website and all the social media so we very much hope to do the formal launch and it's going to be centered margaret and i've decided round uh, a teenager or early 20s he might be we could, i could be doing him down um who is uh, one of the burnley fc and community staff and uh, all the time that we were speaking on Friday, he was sort of stretching and sort of like yawning, and doing all of those things that teenagers do. So we decided to sort of do a campaign around Lazy Lewis and uh, everything's going to be. Can you can you re-energize Lazy Lewis? And we're going to have him sort of lying down in bed. We're going to have him stretched out on the sofa. And of course, Lewis will be one of the people who will be taking that first session. 
So um, that's it. Apart from the fact I had a wonderful tour around the Blackburn Youth Zone, and it's an amazing £7 million facility with 40 members of staff. It costs £1.4 million a year to run. It is astounding. And they uh, very, very kindly are offering to come and take some sessions on health and well-being and young leadership and all of those kinds of things in Cone. But also, very kindly have sent us loads of documentation so we don't have to start from nothing. They said, let us help you. We have experience. So we very gratefully accepted it. Thank you. If there are any questions for us. Yeah, that sounds good. I'd just like to thank both of you for all your work and effort. Uh, it seems to be a, a project that's reaching uh, fruition. and. Uh, you seem to have made lots of new friends and with different organisations, which is good for Cole and the kids, really. So well done to both of you. Thanks very much. So moving on then, councillors. Item 12, land between Lynch's Rose and Knox Lane. I have uh, five or six speakers on this one. Emma Hartley, are you still with us? I am, yes. Yes, good evening and welcome. Hello, good evening. So I want to talk, um, please, about the land, as you've just said, between Lencher's Road and Knott's Lane. It came to my attention when I was perusing Pendle's Plan Part 2, um, even though this land isn't listed as one of the sites that's been selected, it hasn't been listed as a reserve site. It makes it clear that the reserve sites will only be used once the main list of 12 sites has been used for housing. But in addition, separate from the plan, was um, several separate links on the website headed al reasonable alternatives. So I clicked on all these links, looking for various different plots of land and different areas. I was astonished to see how many there was. There's a heck of a lot of these huge plots of green land listed as reasonable alternatives. And then to my horror, I discovered that the land between Lencher's Road and Knott's Lane was listed as one of these reasonable alternatives. When I dug deeper to try and find out what exactly reasonable alternatives meant, I was hoping it meant that maybe in the future, maybe in 50, 60, 100 years time, it might be considered reasonable to use it. But to my horror, I discovered that um, Gleason Homes I've already got a master plan in place, a copy of which I have here, which I'll just wave at everybody. And it's to build 212 homes on the site. Now this is a site that's in open countryside, it's out of the settlement area, it's highly visible. In my opinion, it's a visual amenity for every single person that walks through the centre of Colm, whether you're a business owner that's walking through there shopping, you glance to the right and you see this massive expanse of countryside with these huge ancient trees above it. It's full of wildlife, there's buzzards in there, there's kestrels in there, there's a heron nesting in there, there's two mill ponds. I've spoken to people that have fished there, swum in there. It's just been used as a local amenity, a public space for over 20 years. It's an absent landowner that lives in Liverpool um, who hasn't touched the place. We've all had open access to it. You can see on Google Earth that we've this hundred, well, not hundreds maybe, but there's lots and lots of footpaths. It's used as amenity by all the residents of Waterside. Now, Waterside is a deprived area mostly terraced houses, none of them have got gardens. This amenity is something that when you come out of your terraced house and stand in your garden, you might not have much else good in your life. We are one of the deprived areas. I've noticed that we've actually got the highest crime rate in Colne as well. And yet what we have got going for us, probably the only good thing we've got going for us, is this beautiful, magical wonderland that's full of owls and just nature. And that's our green space. And these builders are obviously looking to come and take our green space and build 212 houses. It's totally unreasonable. To me, it would be environmentally and socially immoral to put it there because it's in the middle of nowhere. You would be dumping probably up to 800 people in the middle of nowhere in a site that's highly visual. There's nothing else there at all. And 
my concern at the moment, other than being on the site already, digging boreholes, doing lots of work. So I'm astonished that they've even taken it so far. So we're talking about a site here that's a reasonable alternative. It's not even on the plan. In my opinion, it's just the wrong place to be putting a suburban housing estate in a rural area in the middle of nowhere. That's not even going into the danger of living on Lenches Road. If you live at the top of Lenches Road, you literally take your life in your hands in the winter. You cannot leave the house. You've unless you've got a four before a Land Rover, you can't get down the road, you can't get up the road. You accept, because we live in an isolated situation, we accept that it's isolated, but we love it, that's what we like about it, and we're prepared for the fact we're stuck in our house for five days. But obviously you couldn't expect 800 people to be stuck in the houses. It's unsustainable, there's no access to anything. You'd have to drive to go anywhere. It is our only open space. We're all absolutely devastated about it. And our concern at the moment is because all this work's been done already, this huge line of trees that we all see and we all walk through like a local woodland could potentially, if they come and decide to clear the site, could all be lost. And so that is my main concern at the moment, the environmental element and the social element to rob the people of Waterside of this piece of land, to me, would just be a total travesty and a tragedy and it would be morally wrong. And that's all yeah. to say on the matter. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I've got Adam Lee. I would just ask speakers if you can keep it brief, it would be appreciated. Uh, and perhaps not to. Uh, first speaker's got lots to say, obviously, because it's a big area. Um, please don't repeat it all. We, we heard it the first time round and we've taken it on board. So, Adam Lee. Yes. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Thank you. This is my, my first time, so please bear with me. <laughs> Absolutely. You take your time. It's fine. Brilliant. Thank you. So I'm uh, talking regarding the same thing as Emma, so I've just quickly tried to scrub out a few of the ones she was saying. Um, basically, the site between Lenches Road and Knotts Lane, which is Pendle Plan 2, P152, we are exceptionally worried regarding this possible development plan which has come to light. There is rumours of 200 plus houses over multiple sta stages to be cited here. This all came to light by fluke as the residents of South uh, Valley of Waterside woke up on the 18th of February 2021 to the shocking sight of a small digger in a large borehole drill with generator cited at the entrance to this field, which I'm noted. Which to note, this equipment has ripped up the entire field with depths of up to one foot in places Bearing in mind that this field is a, reg a regular walking site for the members of Waterside and Castlecliff Walk. I have almost actually been injured from these uh, very deep holes when I walked uh, along and nearly slipped and twisted my ankle while I was walking with dogs um, because the field was left a very muddy mess. This also shows disregard to the public and this field where the company Sirius have arrived to commence the work on a day where the ground was ut utterly saturated. This has led to the generator with two narrow wheels pulled by a track bore drill, basically used as a plough throughout the field. Where I want to know if the site was a, um, oh, oh where I want to know if there was a site contamination review, as all the plant equipment was then drove along the road to mount the trails for transport. The next point is the road problem. I'll quickly jump over Emma's. Uh, Heavy goods vehicle, if there is going to be building commencing on the site, there's only two points on Lencher's Road for heavy goods to actually be dropped off to access the site as it, they'll have to come up Knott's Lane, then drive down, pull up on the main road, and then they'll have to try to turn around and come back up because the um, protected bridge at the bottom, which is uh, historic, uh, also to know, across from one of the entrances is em like Emmett House sort of thing, where the cars have to park on the road. Um, the next issue is the road is heavily used for commuters between Nelson and Burnley due to the dense traffic that can be found at Burnley Road, seen in front of Primit School and the North Valley. The extension of 100 plus houses for stage one with at least two or three cars, including household visitors, will lead to at least 500 cars using free three road points, which at times can be really dangerous, even now to which I've compiled evidence regarding this already for down Lencher's lower. The next point, uh, some of the trees are well over 100 years old um, with a lot of history like Joshua Tree, which is in the centre which overlooks the top of Lencher's 
between Knotts Lane as well. Um, these trees also help with vantage points for a lot of birds, which can be visible all days, and a lot of actual pictures seen of these birds in the trees. Helps pr the trees actually prevent land erosion, which, as you can probably know from the name water, right? there's a lot of water which actually comes through all these fields and pr actually progress through our lands, which are lower lenches. Um, like Emma said, there's a lot of variety of animals. If they actually build there, the animals which are in lower lenches and then have roaming rights all the way up and beyond uh, Turnhill Restoration Grounds, they'll all be cut off, which will then force them to probably move on. Um, where's next? Water, basically. I calculated some stats out for this site. On our heaviest rainpour last year, equated to about 1.4 million gallons of water just on that site within, I think it was a three-day, four-day rainfall. As you can imagine, if you start turning all this soil into parking houses and everything, where's all this 1.4 gallons, uh, 1.4 million gallons of water going to go? Which currently we already have issues on Lencher's Fold and all the way over to Daisy Street of uh, heavy water flow due to um, land actually cut foot, uh, blocking all our land drains, all the uh, soil and everything, which I've actually got videos of, um, I think it was last year, in our garden, we ended up with an uh, actual water fall, fall <laughs> blasting out the ground, which was nearly up to one foot high. So as you can imagine, it'll be a lot of damage to a lot of areas if we convert this into all concrete and tarmac. Uh, the topography of the site actually means you can see the whole site from the south facing of all the Collins Street, from Carry Lane all the way to Bridge Street, which is across from Leisure Centre. And you can also see the entire site from Holt House Rugby and Football Fields. Um, like Emma said, the crime stats for Pendle's plan actually shows Waterside as an alarming highest rate per 1,000 population for dates of 2014 to 15 at 106.2. And the ne next highest area is Whitefield at 89.5. So you can see there's a fair difference between the numbers. And to be honest, from my uh, opinion from all my friends in shops and houses, there's still, to be honest, a regular amount of crime even today. Um, if these houses actually probably get built, where are all the jobs going to come from, which actually contributes to the crime? And that's mainly all my points. Okay, Mr. Lee, thank you very much indeed. Really? Thank you for your time. Thank you for taking the trouble to speak to us. <laughs> it was a struggle, but thank you. No, you're very welcome. Trying to avoid all the bits what Emma did. I was like, uh, cross, cross, cross. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. See you. Have a good evening. Bye. And you. Judy Jacob, good evening. Are you there? Yes, thank you. Sorry, it took me a moment to unmute here. No, thank, you for the, thank you for the opportunity to speak. No, I understand no. that a tree survey has been commissioned on, on the site. And my, my observation, my question relates to the um, potentially piecemeal approach to looking at the ecology of the site. The trees are just part of what's there. Obviously, they're important. And it's, it's, it's good to see that the council is taking proactive approach to surveying them with regard to um, placing tree protection orders on them. But I wanted to ask, and I suppose particularly in the light of work that I did now nearly 30 years ago on Lomisha Marsh, whether an ecological survey has ever been done on this site. So for example, a phase one habitat survey, given the wildlife uh, value that people have already mentioned this evening. If so, when was that survey carried out? And if not, Will the council prioritise the commissioning of such a survey from a reputable consultancy at an appropriate time of year? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will get round to your question when I, I ask Mr Watson for his comments before I open it up for the uh, councillors. So we will we'll listen to everybody first and get the list of questions ready. So, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Caroline Palmer. Thank you. Good evening again. Yes, hello, 
I'm here. Yeah, yeah please okay. do. Yeah, well, I want to re really reiterate everything that Emma and Adam said already, and Judy. Um, obviously, I'm very concerned about the access. Um, it's it's really scary when I come out of the wool pack onto lunches because there's a blind brow, two blind brows. <laughs> And a blind brow and blind bend further down, and the sort of ex that massive amount of extra traffic is actually well, it's just mad. There's no footpaths. There are very deep gullies on either side of Lynch's Road, um, which are a bit hazardous anyway. So people inevitably stick to the middle of the road, um, and um, when it rains, I mean, it's just torrential. I mean, it's like a, you know, it is a turbulent flood coming down either side of Lentis Road. The field up there is is wet. I mean, there are rushes, sedges, willows growing in the middle of it. It's extremely damp, but it acts as a sponge. And it's a sponge that actually protects the, the South Valley from serious flooding. So if that was all turned into tarmac and bricks... It would be a hell of a lot worse. Um, it's very well used. There are multiple footpaths. Um, whenever I go over there, I always meet at least, you know, two or four dog walkers. Um, and it is fantastic in terms of wildlife. I saw a couple, a pair of buzzards there on Tuesday. Um, barn owl regularly, heron. Um, and I know there've been um, great crested newts in the mill ponds in the past. Um, I've actually been in touch with the Lancashire Wildlife Trust to see if they can come and do a survey, but not got through to them yet, but left messages. And I know that Lee um, Johnson went to do a tree survey today, and it sounds as if that's quite good news. He thinks there's a lot of trees that are worthy of preservation, um, as well as the sort of scrub because all the undergrowth is also really important for birds. And certainly the amenity value, um, not only to wildlife, of the spinny cops all the way along the top of um, the Lynch's field is really important, but also the amenity value from the town. I think it's, um, you know, for people living in the streets on the waterside side of um, the spine of the town, it's really important. I mean, I've said all this before, um, actually in 2014, I wrote and asked if the Lenches could be rec recognised as a community asset and a local green space. And I, I nominated it as such and never heard anything afterwards. And I really feel that it's time that it was at least registered as a, a community asset and local green space. If not a nature reserve, I would have thought it might actually um, warrant that. And we look forward to hearing from the Lancashire Wildlife Trust to see what they have to say and make a wonder it's a wonderful green lung for people you know i mean i know you have to be pretty fit to get up there to walk up there, but when you do it is it's just magical you know and it's lucky we're lucky to have it okay thank you thank you very much indeed thank and you. last but not least i have mara brayshaw are you with us Tamara Brayshaw. I'm not sure if um, if she's the lady on the telephone. Yes, um, she is. I've just contacted her now. Just right. on mute here. Okay, what I'll do is I'll call in Mr. Watson. Uh, if you get hold of her, um, I'll give her the opportunity to speak after Mr. Watson's spoken um, and before I call the councillors. Is that okay? Mr. Watson, would you like to comment on any of that? As one or two, particularly flooding comes up several times, which I know is a, is a regular concern for people with the open greenfield sites and ecology, etc. Uh, yes, Jim, it, it's slightly uh, odd situation because we've we've not got a planning application in. Obviously, uh, uh, th there's activity there. Uh, should a planning application be submitted on any land, developers have to come in with the ecology uh, uh, information, highways information, uh, archaeology, whatever may be pertinent to, to the site. Chairman, uh, we don't and won't survey all, all our, our land uh, or particular sites unless 
there is a, a, a planning reason to do so. So um, it might seem a bit harsh, but we won't be going and commissioning a, a wildlife survey on there. If the Wildlife Trust wish to do that, by all means, that, that that's their prerogative. Uh, so, Chairman, uh, one, I know people are... Um, uh, uh, what's so animated, shall I say, about the, the sites being looked at as reasonable alternatives. But Jim, we've got 577 pages of reasonable alternatives. And that's just a way of effectively saying that any site that's put before us, we have to look at and we have to assess. It's it's not a uh, an indication that we are going to allocate all of those sites. Clearly, that's not the case. And that's not been put forward in in either the coal neighbourhood plan or, or indeed the part two plan. So, uh, Chairman, we're not proposing uh, any allocation on there. Uh, Chairman, I do realise that it, there is activity on there. Uh, it's not for us to uh, say that an applicant can or can't put an application in. That's, that's entirely up to them. And I have genuinely no indication that they are going to, anyone's going to put an application in on, on that uh, even if they were, I couldn't say prior to an application because obviously we have uh, confidentiality uh, reasons. But Chairman, I won't read anything into the reasonable alternative. It is a requirement for us to look at all our, of our sites and make assessments uh, on them. And we look at the sites that uh, uh, landowners, developers, whomever it may be, put forward. Uh, Chairman, in terms of flooding, again, uh, uh, were a planning application to be put in, then uh, uh, they would have to look at drainage of a site, on any site, I won't just stick to this site, uh, and uh, put proposals forward as to how and if uh, a site would be uh, drained, looking at the uh, at rainfall characteristics of the area and the drainage characteristic of the site. But Chairman, that would be when and if uh, a planning application is submitted. Uh, Chairman, what, one last point. Uh, uh, I had uh, I asked uh, Lee Johnson to go to site, which he has done today. His view that the not all trees there are uh, meritorious of preserving, but there's a good chunk of them, and he's going to uh, put a, a proposal together to TPO them. But please don't broadcast that because. As it stands, people could go in with a chainsaw and there's no protection. So we will do that as soon as we can. But really, the quieter about it uh, for the moment, uh, we are the better. Okay. Did we manage to get Tamara Brayshaw? I believe someone's writing up uh, some questions in chat for her or something. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to those there. I've got uh, four councillors indicated. Top of the list is Sarah Coburn Price. Um, this first came to my attention when, quite unfortunately, though I suppose I will get a wry smile from uh, Neil Watson, the uh, consultation for the Cone Neighbourhood Plan drew out a series of master plans from developers around Cone. And this wasn't one of them. But in our first meeting after the end of our consultation, um, the developer had got in contact to submit a master plan for consideration by the Neighbourhood Plan Working Group. So Jonathan, Alice and uh, Paul already know about this. We took advice without knowing anything about the site at that stage from our planning consultant. And she said, leave it because you have been out to consultation for regulation 14 and this is none of your business so that that's the position of the neighborhood plan and then separately um i was invited by emma and ad to go and have a look at the site which i know where lenches is but exactly where it sat on the skyline and with the trees i had been previously unaware obviously we don't have an application we're not discussing an application here tonight um, I uh, sounds like the world and his dog asked uh, Lee to go and look at the trees, um, but looked at the site and it is really prominent in long range views. And the neighbourhood plan has commissioned a report that should be unknown participant by May. is now joining. It should be completed by May that will analyse very in a lot of detail the 
important long range views and potentially that will be of interest to your group but it's an it's an odd one as neil as neil comments in that we don't have a planning application we just are aware that there is a master plan in two phases um, I did actually offer the developer the opportunity to engage with some of the South Valley sites that we have highlighted in the neighbourhood plan, which obviously are more accessible, but potentially less viable. So um, that's that's my comment on it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next, I've got Councillor Greaves. Clicking the wrong thing as always. There we are. You're unmuted now. Thank you, Chair. Um, right. Um, about, I don't know whether it's a week ago or something like that, that um, the balloon went up as far as this site is concerned because the local residents, and particularly Emma, discovered that people were on the ground digging trenches, um, drilling holes and being fairly open about the fact that they were surveying it with a view to building a housing estate. And um, at the same time, the local plan was put out for consultation, the Pendle local plan. And so the two issues of somebody looking to uh, perhaps put a planning application in fairly quickly and the allocation of land in the local plan have all got confused together really they've all got tied up together and in a sense we need to look at them separately and so it seemed to me that there were serious problems with particularly the first and therefore it was re reasonable to bring it to this committee to have this discussion and therefore i put it on the agenda for this committee the question of the local plan, I think, has to be left to the local plan process. Uh, there's nothing we can do tonight to change the local plan process. It's not our responsibility. As a committee, um, we have heard the um, very strong representations we've heard from, from local people about it and understand that. And uh, um, I'm sure that they are, well, I know that they are making the same representations to the local plan process. So for this evening's meeting, though not for other events, obviously, the local plan process we can put on one side um, and it will have to go through that process. At the moment, as Neil Watson said, it is not a proposal by Pendle Council to put this piece of land in the local plan as an allocated housing site, or indeed as anything else. Um, and I don't think it is likely that anybody from a council point of view will bring it forward, even if some of the sites which have been put in turn out, um, it turns out that the council wants to take them out. I don't think they'll come to this site, this side. Emma said 50 years, 100 years. Well, um, 50, I was sick for 50 years. But as far as the, the, the threat to this site is the threat of a planning application and the threat that action may be taken to try to preempt um, things that can be done without planning permission in advance of the planning application being made. And the most obvious one the really obvious one is the question of the trees and um, whether they are worthy of a tree preservation order. Um, I don't know whether it would have to be an individual order since there are a long line of trees mainly um, rather than a wood. I don't know whether it would have to be tree preservations on each one individually, which might perhaps take some time in surveying, or whether um, a line could be drawn round them like you could on a hedge or a wood and for the time being at least preserve all of the trees within that line and I'd like a, an answer from Neil on that because it seems to me that would be a much quicker process and could be done on the balance that a majority of the trees or perhaps a clear majority of the trees, the large majority 
would be suitable for a TPO. Um, if and when a planning application comes in, the whole question can be challenged, obviously, and the individual trees, if, if, if an application comes in, the owners would have to decide uh, whether any of the trees had to come down and they'd have to have them surveyed for safety reasons. But at the moment, I think if we can just take them as a bunch and put an order on all of them, and that would also include, as I understand it, it would include any new trees or scrubland or hedges or whatever. I'm not sure there are hedges there, but within within the um, within the group of trees concerned. So I'd like an answer from Neil about that. The other question is how quickly it can be done. Um, Neil has said, well, let's not publicise it, but this is a public meeting anyway, and anybody who um, takes the trouble to read the local Facebook groups, it's all over there. So um, there is a danger that they might come and take preemptive action. So my second question is, if that happens, can the council move quickly to stop them? So if local residents discovered that people were going marking trees with X's or going on with machinery to cut them down, uh, which clearly would take a little bit of time, um, and they contacted the council, can the council step in immediately and stop them doing that? Um, in order to prevent them just clearing the whole lot before they even put a planning application in. So those are the two questions I want to ask. And I would like to move a motion at some stage anyway, that we um, that we ask um, the council staff to pursue the question of tree preservation orders on appropriate trees on that site um, preferably all of them, um, with some speed. We don't want to be back here in June or July or whenever and it to be too late. So there's three things there for Neil. Okay. Well, if you like, I'll let the other councillors speak and then we'll go to Neil to, to pick up on, on on the questions, if that's okay. So I've got... Okay. Look. Tamara's got a question in chat. Yeah, okay. Do you want to read it? Um, oh, she just wanted to mention the structural damage to the bridge on Knotts Lane a few years ago from the river rising, I believe. Okay, so thinking of the, the water rising due to the building work that's proposed. There it? was structural damage apparently to the bridge that needed fixing because of that. So, yeah, that's all she wanted to mention. Okay, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Spring, yeah, at Spring Gardens Road, the one she's referencing. Right. Okay, thank you for that. So next up, I've got Councillor Lord. Thank you, Chair. Um, as, as we all know, and as people have already said, that there is no planning application in. We all know that. Um, but to be uh, forewarned is to be forearmed. And I think if it ever happens... You've already got, or we have already got, a really good group um, that will campaign against this. Uh, th there's already been things said about flooding and stuff like that, but I, I, I part-time lived um, at the Nook um, Children's Home, not as old, but as somebody that worked there, four days a week we had to live there. And so I was there for 10, 11 years. And uh, in the back of the nook, they had a big garden. They took part of a field and sunken into that field was a big patio and then a retaining wall round it. And the amount of times that that was flooded and somebody's already mentioned like a waterfall, that's exactly how it was, like a waterfall cascading right down the field, right through the patio, out the other end. Um, there was one time, although we don't get the same snow as we used to, but if it snowed, we were stuck. We were definitely stuck. And I remember one time we had to take 12 boys to Asda 
eat with a rucksack, do the shopping for the week and walk back and up Lenches, up Knotts Lane. And the other thing that Caroline mentioned was the traffic. I think, I've been trying to work it out while everybody's been talking, I think that in the 10 years I was there, we probably saw about 30, 40 accidents, bumps. No, nothing major, nothing major, but you you just have them so many a month or or perhaps a bit less than that, but they, they did happen. Um, so that's all I've got to say, except that bringing this brought it to my mind, that nothing to do with this whatsoever, but at, at a certain point on Lenshers, on a clear sunny day, you can see Malham Cove. So there you go. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Perhaps, perhaps we'll be able to do that soon, wouldn't they? If we can go out for a walk again. That would be nice. Uh, Councillor Foxley. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to um, mention that um, the I... I Stood in this in the middle of this site um, to take a, a photograph, which um, actually is the photograph that appears on the front and back covers of the draft from neighbourhood plan. Um, and it, so it, it actually forms the um, the foreground to the photograph that is the cover to that plan. So. Uh, just to reassure um, people that certainly from a neighbourhood plan point of view, there was um, never any um, intention to allocate this as a site. Um, it was um, recognised that it was part of the uh, important setting of coal. Um, I mean, the, I'm, I'm very pleased to hear um, that um, the protection of the trees is being looked at, um, it does concern me greatly that uh, whether that can be affected in time to prevent any um, uh, any uh, loss in the meantime. Um, and then the, the, the other thing I just wanted to say is, is about the fact that um, this uh, area is one of the areas that forms a very important um, aspect of the setting of Colne, and, and Colne is fairly unique in as much as, and it has been mentioned, um, but it, in as much as you can stand either on Albert Road or on any of the, um, or many of the, um, the the streets that lead down from Albert Road to Waterside, and look straight out into the countryside and, and greenery beyond. Um, and um, you know, I'm just I've just been while well, other people have been talking, I've just been testing that uh, on on um, Google Earth and, and plonking myself or Google Maps and, and plonking myself on different streets and just confirming my perception that that is true. And and it's exactly these trees you see on the horizon from those views. Um so um whilst I'm you know I'm not one to be um I'm certainly no NIMBY, I'm an architect. Um, I uh, am not anti-development per se, um, but this ain't somewhere that I would be um, keen to see uh, developed. So that, that's that's it. And, and yeah, I, I, I uh, am wholly in line with uh, Councillor Greaves' views and concerns about the trees. Uh -huh. Councillor Mann, and then I'll go to Neil to cover any of the questions that are still outstanding. Yeah, I, I was up at the site um, this morning and it is an absolute joy. And it's such an asset to Cone, we cannot afford to lose. And um, from what the councillors have said, I hope, Emma, you've been reassured that um, we're all going to work together in order to keep this an asset for history, really, for 100 years, uh, Councillor Greaves, hopefully. Um, and um, I would like to see it as a protected space uh, in the, in the neighbourhood plan. 
So that that would be my point. And I'm very concerned about the digging of the holes that has already started. And we need to keep an eye on that. That's all. So okay, I'll go to Neil Watson now, if he could just comment on what's been said and what he would suggest. Tim, you probably saw a comment now. Uh, uh, I know sometimes uh, we, we get uh, a pillar sometimes. We're a member of staff, Lee, who uh, I haven't asked him to do this, and he's just uh, WhatsApped me and said he's working on the TPO now uh, at home in his own time. So I have told him to stop because it is far too late for a member of staff to, to be doing that, but he's very diligent. So that means the TPO will be uh, with legal tomorrow, uh, and it's exactly as Councillor Greaves said, It will our first one will be a an area TPO, and we'll probably then refine that over the coming uh, months. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, on the, on the back of that, then, if, you, if you're agreeable, Councillor, I would just suggest that our resolution is we support the officers' work, in this endeavour to protect these trees. I'm, I'm very happy about that. I mean, I would also, I mean, I mean, I don't think we can put this in a resolution. I'd like to thank all the people who came to make the presentation. Absolutely. Yes. Nothing else, this piece of land is now very well embedded in the minds and heads of all the councillors here, um, most of whom had probably never heard of it a week ago. So um, that's very, very useful. Thank you very much for coming and doing that. And um, thank you, Neil and uh, Lee Johnson. And so I, I, I'm very happy to move that we support the actions of our staff in this matter. OK, we're all happy with that. Anybody wish to speak, say anything? No? Can, no. I, can I just say thank you to everyone who just supported then? It means a lot to us all, just being seen on the uh, yeah, group chat. Yeah. You're very, you're very welcome. Brilliant. Yes, thank, thank you. you, thank you. I feel quite emotional. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Okay. I'm glad you make it. If people make the effort, you get the rewards. It's as simple as that. It takes a bit of effort to come and talk to us. That's all that has to happen, and it's then up to us to act on it, really. So, thank you from me. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on then, councillors. So, item 12B. I think that's been fairly well taken care of by Tim Horsley, the emails that I've seen. Um, does anybody want to talk any more on it? I think it's covered. Very briefly, Chair, I put this on, as a, again, as a backstop. Um, I've not spoken to, to Tim very recently, but if you have, and you think he is taking care of it, it's all about... Um, a garage down New Street, which um, members will remember we had a planning application in for a, an MOT station, I think, at one stage, or no, it wasn't, it was a car wash for a car, oh, wash, car wash, which we turned oh. down because of the location of it and the inadequate access off Burnley Road. And the complaints now are that the garage is effectively taking over the locality with parking its cars um, regarding the council owned little council owned car park uh, at the top of New Street. Tomorrow, very short. Is now exiting. Uh, the little car park at the top of New Street, regarding it, has been their own car park and generally um, behaving in an antisocial way. If you think, Chair, that uh, Tim is dealing with it adequately, I will happily withdraw it at this stage. Yeah. And um, we will, we will, we'll see what happens in a month, and otherwise we'll bring it back next time. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I was going to suggest. It seems to be on the case, so it's just us giving him more hassle when he's, he's already on with it. Isn't it really? Okay, thank you. Good. Okay, so now we're at uh, the, the point of excluding members of the public, unfortunately. Um, to deal with the last uh, two items. So I, I would suggest we have a two or three minute break because Lynn needs to go through to check because we've had so many guests that nobody is still logged on before we start talking on this issue. So to members of the public, I wish you good night.
I wish I could leave with you because I've had enough by now, but uh, we're not supposed to say that, are we? So uh, two-minute break, councillors, and then we'll come back. Yeah, man. Could I do, you just do all have to agree to exclude the public and press. Okay. Anybody disagree? Everybody seems happy. Okay. Thank you.